The new Meadowlands Stadium is the state-of-the-art home for the Giants and the Jets of the NFL. But today, college football takes to the big stage with the Black Knights of Army and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers as the featured performers. College football on ESPN3.com is next. ESPN3.com College Football presented by Sprint. And today we come your way from the magnificent new Meadowlands Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where it will be the Black Knights of Army versus the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bob Bacosi, along with former College Football Hall of Famer Kurt Warner. Welcome to the first FBS college football game played at this magnificent new facility. Key game for both schools, Kurt both wanting to become bowl eligible army four and two and rutgers three and two well it takes six to get to be uh the bowl eligible so uh they they obviously want to win this game pick out two words which you think best describe army i would say discipline and opportunistic uh discipline from the uh standpoint that they don't make a lot of mistakes uh, they don't turn the ball over they don't create a lot of uh uncertain situations for themselves uh, opportunistic from the standpoint that they force turnovers. And they're plus 12 in that turnover department. Now for Rutgers, an injury to one player has created an opportunity for another. The Scarlet Knights are very excited about the upside of their freshman quarterback. Well, with uh, Chase Dodd, uh, you have a kid uh, that uh, can throw the ball extremely well. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, he makes a couple of big throws down the field. This is a great throw across the middle. And uh, he finds his target there. He's a smart kid. He understands the game. He doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. And uh, last week he threw for 322 yards. So uh, there's a lot of upside for this guy. And that was his first career start because of an injury to sophomore quarterback Tom Savage. Now Rutgers has had its way in recent years with Army. They've won the last six meetings. Can the Black Knights of the Hudson end that streak today? Back with the opening kickoff right after this. Today's game on ESPN3.com is presented by Sprint, the Now Network. Bob Picozzi along with former three-time Pro Bowler Kurt Warner at the Meadowland Stadium Army at Rutgers. And let's check out the weather forecast. It is a sunny day, but Kurt, it is a windy day. It could be difficult to throw the ball. That has to favor Army, right? I, you're exactly right. When you're uh, last in the NCAA with regards to throwing the football, this win is not going to bother you. And Army is dead last out of 120 teams. The cadets run the triple option under their second year head coach, Rich Ellerson. He sort of perfected that particular style of play in eight years at Cal Poly. But he's added some new wrinkles to that offense here at Army. And it, it really has created a long week in the, uh, the suite of the coaching offices at Rutgers. Well, what you're going to see is a couple of things. Number one, you're going to see a broken bone type of formation where they have two guys in the backfield. You're going to see them do the uh, a fly sweep, which are going to motion across. And you're going to see counters coming back to the opposite side. So uh, it uh, it makes it somewhat uh, very difficult uh, with regards to defending these guys. And in chatting this week with Rutgers coach Greg Schiano, he said there literally aren't enough hours in the day to prepare for an opponent like Army. He said because they are completely unlike any other team we will play this year. Well, what they have been doing is uh, sort of pre-planning for these guys in the fall, and then they'll take a day throughout the uh, week to prep for Army again. So they have done uh, their homework. Hopefully it'll pay off. 
Army has won the toss and is elected to defer. Rutgers will receive theirs. Mason Robinson back at the goal line. He averages 25 yards per return. And kicking off will be Matt Campbell for the Black Knights. 5'9", 195 pound senior from Lothian, Maryland. And just to give you an idea how windy it is, how often do you see someone hold the football in the opening kickoff? Not very often, uh, especially in the in the Meadowland, but I think this is a, sort of a tradition in the Meadowland, I guess, right. to a certain degree. Yeah, fan, fans were wondering, it was so windy next door at the old Giants Stadium, what would it be like here? Well, the answer is, it'll be very windy and tough to throw the ball. Robinson from his own five on the kickoff. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Steve Erzinger along with Josh McNary. And here is Chase Dodd. And he was spectacular in his first career start a week ago against the University of Connecticut. All he did was complete 18 of 29 for 322 yards. And he had two huge throws, Kurt, in the last four minutes when Rutgers scored 10 points to win the game. Well, you know what? In addition to that, he had six throws that were 20 plus. So he was able to get the ball down the football field. Rutgers will operate out of the shotgun with three receivers to the left. The lone setback is Joe Martinick, and he'll get the ball on first down. About a four-yard pickup up the middle for Martinick. The rest of that Rutgers offense, we told you about Dodd and Martinick. The wideouts, Mohamed Sanu. He does a little bit of everything. We'll see him run out of the out of the wild cat. He is the leading rusher for the Scarlet Knights. Up front, Desmond Stapleton is Rutgers' best pass blocker. And Desmond Wynn and Art Forrest are the best run blockers up front for the Scarlet Knights. Second down and five. One wide receiver to each side. Dodd to throw. Plenty of time. Still looking. And he throws the ball away. Sometimes a pass to the sideline is a smart throw. Defensively for Army. The key man defensively for the Black Knights. Keep your eye on number 44, Josh McNary from that quick end spot. He has more sacks than anyone in West Point history. Among the linebackers, Steven Anderson is the best linebacker against the run. And in the secondary, Rich Ellerson considers Josh Jackson his best cover man, and Donnie Dixon is safety, the best run support guy. Third down and five. Rutgers dead last in the Big East at converting third downs this year. Dodd to throw, and they won't convert that one. He had his man Sanu open, but he under threw it a little bit too low, Kurt. Yeah, you know, maybe it may be uh, the, the win that uh, that's coming to play. It may be uh, first game jitters, uh, but yeah, that throw was off. And pretty good illustration of how windy it is is how will it affect the kicking game and in to do the punting for Rutgers Teddy Delagana averaging 41 yards per kick. He's sixth in the Big East in that category. Back deep for Army is Josh Jackson and he's standing at his own 28 yard line. Now that's a beautiful kick with this win. Jackson will catch it on the run. He's got a shot. Breaks a tackle or two and gets it to the 47 yard line. Great field position for Army on their first possession. Well, I think he had a little win aid on that one, but uh, he did come up aggressively and uh, take the ball and, and got a few yards down the field. So nice return. And there's the quarterback for Army, Trent Steelman. It is his job to run the triple option. He does it very well. And he will spend a good portion of his day handing off to number seven, Jared Hassan, who's a fullback. And you have to have a good fullback to make this offense work. Ball fake and Steelman throws on first down, completes to Hassan out of the backfield. Pushed out of bounds by Antonio Lowry, but not before the Black Knights pick up the first down. The rest of that Army offense, Patrick Mealy is one slot back. Malcolm Brown is the other. The wideouts are David Brooks and Austin Barr. And up front, Rich Ellerson considers Seth Reed his best run blocker. Zach Peterson, the center, is making his 19th consecutive start. First and 10 Army from the Rutgers 41. In motion was Malcolm Brown. Steelman on the keeper. And he's met by Steve Boharness, the middle linebacker for Rutgers. The rest of that Rutgers defense up front, Alex Silvestro is fourth in the Big East in tackles for loss. Among the linebackers, Manny Abreu had a huge game against UConn last week. Ten tackles, a forced fumble, and a tackle for a loss. 
And in the secondary, and Joe LaVeige and Kasim Green, Rutgers has a pair of safeties who are outstanding at stopping the run. Second and seven. This time the handoff to the slot back Brown. And he'll get it inside the 35 before he's brought down by Rowe. Brown, that slot back, Kurt, we will see him line up in a variety of spots on the field. You're exactly right on that one. But in this particular situation, we had a fly sweep coming across. And one of the things that they do very well is that they block down the field. Their slot backs do an excellent job of making blocks for one another. Army third and two. They have converted 49% of the times on third down. The Steelman, the quarterback, what a good quick thrust by both the center, Peterson, and the quarterback, Steelman. Well, sometimes it's easier to catch these guys off uh, off their kilter a little bit. This was uh, unusual for Army with regards to a, a quick snap, and uh, obviously it was beneficial for them. First and ten, Army at the Rutgers 30-yard line. Three minutes gone by. 37th meeting between these two schools who are located only 76 miles apart. Steelman with the pickup would have had more, but he lost his footing. Gets to the 25 yard line. Now, now, Kurt, because it's so difficult to prepare for this unique style of offense that Army has, does that mean that we can expect Rutgers to probably do a better job at defending it later in the game than, than early in the game? I think you know that right on the uh, on the head. They're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to get used to the timing. Uh, obviously, when you're running against a practice squad, you don't get the same type of timing. So, uh, yeah, as they move forward, they should get better with it. And Nick DePaula played the role of the scout quarterback at practice this week for Rutgers. Steelman on the pitch. Patrick Mealy made one man miss before he gets it to the 22 yard line, leaving a third and two. Kasim Green made the stop for Rutgers. Here's a look at that triple option. Well, obviously, he's making his reads. And uh, it was defended well at that particular time. And uh, they were in the right place at the right time. And that's the key uh, with regards to Rutgers. Rutgers outstanding at stopping opponents on third down. Number one in the Big East in that category. Third and two for Army. Seelman. He's met by Lowry. No gain. Fourth and two on a windy day. We'd be looking at about a 40-yard field goal. And indeed, that's what we're going to see. Rich Ellerson sends his kicker, Alex Carlton, onto the field. Well, as you can see on this particular play, they defended it extremely well. The, uh, the uh, linebacker, Lowry, got up inside and made that read. Carlton, longest field goal this year is from 42 yards. He's one for three from beyond the 40. And he hooked it. Carlton now four for 11 overall. So Army got great field position, but unable to cash in with some points. Rutgers ball when we come back.
We are scoreless. Army and Rutgers, an old rivalry which began in 1891. This is only the second experience of playing Rutgers for Coach Rich Ellerson, born in Japan, graduated from Hawaii. In his second year at Army, spent eight years at Cal Poly, one year at Southern Utah. And on first down, Rutgers goes nowhere. Stopped by Chad Littlejohn, who is a distant relative to Lieutenant General William Westmoreland. Of course, when you're talking about the United States Military Academy, Kurt, you're talking in many cases half the roster has some sort of connection with the military one way or another. Dodd hands off to Jordan Thomas. Keeps those thigh pads going. There's a Rutgers player injured on the field. Back at the line of scrimmage, Antoine Aaron made the stop. Rutgers trainer David McCune is out to tend to the injured player. Looks like it's Desmond Wynn, the left guard. Here's the the Army Rutgers rivalry that we told you about. It goes back a bit. 1891, Rutgers has won six in a row. Last time Army won was at West Point in 1997. Last time they played here at the Meadowlands next door at where Giant Stadium once stood. Army won that one 42-21. Of course, 1996, one of the great seasons, Kurt, in Army history. The Black Knights won 10 and 2 and went to a bowl game. They have not gone to a bowl game since they have high hopes of ending that bowl game drought this year. Well, right now they're at 4 and 2. And as we uh, talked earlier about uh, the magic number is 6. Uh, they're not very far away from it. And uh, th they stand a, probably a good chance of, of getting to a bowl game this year. See if we can figure out what happened on the previous play to Desmond Wynn. The left guard will be at the top of the screen on this replay. There's number 70. Well, an Army player took him out down by the knees. Yeah, it looks like he got cut uh, down below the knees on that particular play. Normally that happens the other way around. The offensive player does it to the defensive player. Win a 6'6", 290-pound junior out of Bear, Delaware. Greg Schiano considers him along with Hart Force as his two best run blockers. He is assisted off the field. Greg Schiano has not been thrilled with the lack of consistency of the play of his offensive line this year. Well, when you look at the offensive line, uh, there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, they are uh, they're juniors and seniors, but they're very limited in their actual playing time. And uh, they're thin at that particular uh, position as well. So this is, uh, is going to be tough on them. Number 60, Caleb Ruck, is in at guard, replacing the injured player win. So after Sanu took the snap out of the shotgun on that on first down, Dodd to throw out of the pocket. That should have been caught in and out of the hands of Jeremy Deering. Dixon providing coverage. And of course, whenever you're talking about the military academies and their opponents, the military academies are always giving away tons of weight on the two on the two lines. Well, with regards to the offense and the defensive line, you're looking at uh, close to 50 pounds as far as uh, the difference between the O-line and the D-line. So in the punt will be Delagana. Josh Jackson back at his own 27-yard line. Takes a Rutgers bounce. And finally is down by Brandon Jones at the 23-yard line. That's where Army will take over when we come back.
Welcome back to East Rutherford, New Jersey. Army and Rutgers are scoreless, and so far, Kurt Rutgers has had the ball for six plays and has gone three and out, three and out. Well, obviously, this is not what they expected, so uh, they're going to have to make some adjustments. First and ten for the Black Knights. Short pickup. Eric Legrand made the stop. Ball carried by Patrick Mealy. Army four and two opened the season with a dramatic 31 27 win at Eastern Michigan then lost a close one on a field goal to Hawaii that is Rich Ellerson's alma mater then beat North Texas Duke on the road lost by a touchdown at Temple and beat Tulane by 18 on the road last week handoff up the middle Hassan gets it out to the 30 leaving a third and three Charlie Noonan made the stop. Army has improved so much offensively, Kurt, particularly when it comes to scoring points. They're 32 points per game, their highest average since 2007. Well, you know, right now they're uh, at that same mark, or better than their last year's mark with regards to scoring and touchdowns as well. Black Knights one for two on third down. They need four here. Steelman on the keeper. He'll get it. Gets it out to the 38 yard line brought down by Charlie Noonan Rich Ellerson told us Steelman makes great decisions. He gets into the right play. He makes the right read. Well, on this replay. You can see that as well. The fullback is the first option. He's the second option off the off tackle hole and uh, it was a great decision by him and he picks up a first down six foot 204 pound sophomore from Bowling Green Kentucky Steelman will keep it himself again. Bo Harness, the first one to make contact after a pickup of two on the play. So, what exactly, Kurt, is the key defensively? On your Number 67, 15 yard penalty, replay, first down. We're going to get a hold on Jason Johnson, the right tackle, first penalty. Army, by the way, mm -hmm. the fewest penalty yards in the country. You would expect discipline out of a, a military academy, and their football team is the same. If you're defensively, you're playing this team that has such a different style offense, what are some of the keys to trying to contain it? Well, obviously, we talked about uh, it being disciplined. The, uh, the front line has to be disciplined. The tackles have to be disciplined. The linebackers have to make sure that they make their read accordingly. And then your free safety and your strong safety have to come up and close the gap. So this will be first and 25. Army threw the ball on its first play today hasn't thrown since here Stillman's second throw it's complete to George Jordan brought down at the 30 yard line by Brandon Bing Army has uh, difficulty uh, when you uh, take them out of their uh, third and uh, their first down and three second and three three yards in a cloud of dust and when you have a 15 yard penalty for holding uh, it, it makes it very tough on Army to get to their first down marker. As we mentioned there are 120 schools in the country in the football bowl subdivision and Army is dead last in passing. They average only 68 yards per game. It's just not what they do. Steelman will try throwing here. It is underthrown, intended for David Brooks. And that will bring up a third down and 17. And Steelman looks like he's hurt. Steelman, not sure whether it's the left shoulder or the left wrist, but he started coming to the sideline and immediately indicated that he needed medical attention. And that's the last thing that Rich Ellerson and his staff wanted to see. Looks like he's favoring that. Yeah. That is it the left wrist? Looks like the left wrist or maybe the left hand itself. So in to replace him will be Max Jenkins, 6'2, 195 pound junior from Houston. He's carried the ball 11 times for 30 yards and a touchdown this year. He's attempted three passes, completed one for 20 yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns. His brother, Ross, was a quarterback at Louisiana Tech. Nothing like taking the field in your first snap is third and 17. Hands off to Malcolm Brown around the left side. Tight rope the sideline. He managed to stay in bounds and pick up another five or six. He'll still be about 
four yards short of the first down. Steve Boharness made the stop. Let's look at the replay here. This is a fly sweep coming across on the wide side of the field. He's got a blocker in front of him. And uh, you're exactly right. He uh, he did tight tight rope that uh, that line going down the uh, field. Almost picked it up. So in the punt for the first time will be Jonathan Bulls. He's averaging 40 yards per punt. Rich Ellerson says he does a good job of playing keep away at trying to eliminate the opponents from returning. And he'll try to kick to the sideline here. Did not do it successfully. Mason Robinson fumbled it. Looks like he got back on top of it. And ball bounced be, right to him on that one. It'll be Rutgers ball at the 28. So the Scarlet Knights managed to dodge a bullet there. We'll see if we can find out what happened to Steelman, the Army quarterback. They're working on him on the sideline. A look at Army quarterback Trent Steelman who left the field with an injury on that last possession. Well, there's one good sign. He's putting the helmet back on. We will keep our eye on that as the backup quarterback Max Jenkins loosens up on the sideline. On first down, Dodd completes the pass to Mohamed Sanu. Pick up of about four, stop made by Steve Erzinger. And Sanu is someone, Kurt, who does, I was going to say a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. more like a lot of everything for yeah, Rutgers. He on runs the Wildcat. Uh, he's the leading rusher, the leading receiver. Uh, he's an all-purpose kind of guy. And Greg Schiano told us this week that when Sanu is running with the ball, once he makes a decision, he accelerates very quickly. He can really spread the defense. Second down and five for Chase Dodd out of the shotgun. Good protection. And eventually he goes down. The first hit was made by McNary. For McNary, that will be his eighth sack of the year. He's eighth in the country in that category. He has had a spectacular career at West Point. Let's take a look at it. He looks like he's had he has plenty of time to throw the football. This, this is more of a coverage sack than anything else where he just doesn't have a place to throw the football. That is the 26th career sack for McNary most in West Point history third and 15 for Rutgers Scarlet Knights 0 for 2 trying to avoid a third straight three and out Dodd scrambles still looks upfield throws across the middle of Sanu and there's your first down what a throw penalty marker in the Rutgers backfield this is coming back it's too bad because we saw Everyone raves about Dodd's talent, Kurt. He rolled left, throwing against the grain, and he threw the ball accurately. Actually, it was a dangerous throw, but not when, not when you hit your receiver. Very, uh, very nice throw. Uh, it shows a lot of his arm strength on that particular throw. When you're going to the left and you throw back to the right, he gets flushed out of the pocket. He tries to sit in the pocket. Looks like Army is bringing a lot of twist gains up inside. He rolls out to the left, throws it back to the right. 
and right on the money. Unfortunately, you had a, a holding penalty on that play. So this will make it third and 25. Not a whole lot of plays in the playbook. This is where the quarterback looks at the sideline and the offensive coordinator goes to get a drink of water. Hand off up the middle. Martinek. All they're trying to do there is create more room for their punter. So Rutgers has had the ball three times and has yet to pick up a first down. Looks like Army has uh, has figured them out and are, and is defending them extremely well. And uh, Rutgers is going to have to get some offense going here. Delagana has averaged 42 punts on two kicks. The last one was a 48 yarder. Josh Jackson back at his own 37. So the Black Knights should get good field position here. Blocked, Blocked by Zach Watts. And then scooped up by Sean Westfall. Normally that's what Rutgers does to the opposition. It's Rutgers that has blocked 46 kicks since Greg Schiano took over 10 years ago. This time it happened to them. Obviously we got pressure coming up the middle on this particular play. And uh, he just reaches his hand out. Uh, Zach Watts reaches his hand out and, uh, and blocks it. Great play for Zach. Uh, a great opportunity for uh, Army uh, to, uh, to punch the ball in the end zone. First and 10, Army. And Steelman is back in at quarterback. Hand off. No. He gives to Malcolm Brown. Went around the left side. And got inside the 10 to the 8. David Rowe made the stop. So whatever the injury was to Steelman, he only missed one play. So the ball is at the 8. That'll make it a second down and about 6. Let's see if Army can take advantage of the first big play of the game, that block punt by Zach Watts. Steelman himself. Ball popped loose at the end of the play. Rutgers recovered in the end zone. Unless the play was dead. Looks like it's going back the other way. I see the replay. We have a fumble on the play. Recovered by Rutgers. First down. It is Rutgers' ball. Very costly turnover. This was a design quarterback, uh, not a quarterback sneak, but just a quarterback play up the middle. Yeah, it looks like the ball did come out when he hit the ground. Big play for Rutgers on that. So we've seen two big plays here uh, in a matter of uh, one minute. Is under review. And they're going to review the replay. Kasim Green recovered the fumble. Both of these teams are just outstanding in the turnover category. Antonio Lowry punched it loose. Rutgers is number one, Kurt, in the Big East in turnover margin. That makes them a plus five for the year. Mm -hmm. Army is number one in the country. With that fumble, they are still a plus 11. Yeah. Well, the, you know, when you have a, a, a defense uh, that uh, that focuses on uh, creating turnovers, uh, these are the type of opportunities that you need it most. Well, the question is, is there a possibility that they will rule that Steelman was down? He fell down on his back and somewhere around the right time, at the, about the time he did that, the ball went flying out of his hands and up in the air and eventually was recovered by Green. Well, they, they ruled it as a fumble, right? So now they're going to have to uh, disprove that with regards to it being a fumble. That's the ruling on the okay. field. The ruling, correct, was a fumble, and the ball unquestionably was recovered by Rutgers. That, that part is inarguable. Well, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> not sure That's that, a tough call. Not sure there's enough to overturn it. Now on the flip side, Army is still going to have pretty good field position regardless because they've got them backed up. Of 
course Rutgers should uh, should feel free to pick up a first down anytime because they've yet to do that in their first three possessions and if they go three and out and turn it back over to Army here that could turn into a disaster. Well obviously Rutgers is going to have to get some offense going here. You cannot just go three and out and three and out and three out and out and expect your defense to hold up especially with a, uh, a team that uh, has uh, the weapons that Army has. This is the first time that Rutgers has played a game here at the Meadowlands since the last time they played Army back in 1996 and in chatting this week with Greg Schiano, he said, look, this is a fabulous facility. It's a great experience for our players, but we're playing here for financial reasons. We would much rather play on our campus where we have an incredible student turnout, and indeed they always do. After further review, the runner was down prior to losing position. It'll be third down at the three-yard line. So Army there, retains the ball. So there you have it. They ruled that Steelman was, in fact, down before the ball popped loose so they reversed the call and he did not pick up a first down on the play so it's third down and less than one army two for four on third down the keeper touchdown Great ball fake by Steelman. He stuck it in and out of the belly of the fullback Hassan. And that's what triple option quarterbacking is all about. You're exactly right. Uh, you know what? This the first option is the fullback. The second option is the uh, the quarterback up inside. And these two guys, they they are primarily running the inside zone. Into attempt the extra point for Army will be Alex Carlton. He is now a perfect 27 for 27. So Army takes advantage of a huge play on special teams. Also takes advantage of an official's reversal. Here's the block. Zach Watts with the block. And recovered by his teammate Sean Westfall. There's the play by Steelman. Originally ruled a fumble recovery by Rutgers. They overturned it said he was down and when Army got the ball Steelman took it in it's seven nothing for Steelman that is his eighth touchdown run of the season that also means that he has either run for or passed for 10 of Army's last 13 touchdowns of course quarterback play is so important Kurt needless to say no matter what style of offense you run but particularly when you run this one well, he is the key to their offense, obviously, and, he, and with one year under his belt, uh, he has the ability to uh, to make adjustments, uh, to, to to pretty much change things as he see it uh, uh, on the line of scrimmage as well. Matt Campbell kicks off. And LaFedge on the return gets it out to the 37-yard line. LaFedge is third in the Big East. Averaging 28 yards per return. This is far and away the best possession for Rutgers that Army scoring drive three plays only 12 yards took 48 seconds concluding with the three yard run by Steelman. But the biggest play of the game so far Kurt the block punt by Zach Watts. Well obviously you're looking for big plays and uh, if you can create it uh, with your special teams you know that's that just that's a bonus uh, with regards to what you're doing on offense and defense. First and 10 Rutgers. At its own 38. Dodd hands off to Thomas. Picks up about three now. Kurt Thomas has seen extra playing time because Martinek in the second game of the year against Florida International hurt his ankle. He really has not been right since then. In fact, he has only rushed for 89 yards in the last four games since the injury. Well, you know what? When you have an ankle injury, uh, it just depends on whether it's a high ankle sprain or a low ankle sprain. And sometimes those things just go on and on and on and they just linger on. In motion will be Thomas to the top of your screen. Penalty marker on the play. This will be whistled dead before the snap. Probably looking at a false start. Scarlet Knights. Prior to the play, false start. 
offense, number 71. After the play, personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Devin Watkins of Rutgers is the man who jumped. But that will be turned around by the personal foul against Army. That's very unacademy like. Army number one in the country when it comes to the least penalized mm -hmm. team in the country. But this is a big one. So Rutgers will get the ball in enemy territory for the first time today. Here's Rich Ellerson. He says, look, it's the United States Military Academy playing a game. Football is not a metaphor for war. Our young men understand the culture. Out of the Wildcats, Sanu threw it downfield. Jump ball. Incomplete intended for Thomas. Sanu got absolutely hammered just as he threw that football by Josh McNary. It's amazing he got the ball downfield as far as he did. Look at this hit. Oh. Hello. That uh, that'll wake you up if, you, if you're uh, if you're halfway asleep on, uh, on on out there playing that game. That will definitely wake you up. Second and ten. Dodd hands off Martinet finds the hole and he has the first down. At the Army 39 yard line, Donovan Travis made the stop. Martinek makes a, a real nice jump cut on this particular play, slides back to the left side and gets up the field and runs downhill. And that's what this is going to take. They've got to get this offense going, whether they do it by the run or by the pass. Howard Barbieri, the senior center from Leonardo, New Jersey, making the key block. Out of the Wildcat again, it's Sanu. This time, he'll keep it himself. First hit made by Chad Littlejohn. Rich Ellerson was telling us about Sanu. He said they do a great job of getting the ball into his hands. He's a threat running it and catching it. And then he throws it. That's not fair. Well, they, they say he has one of the stronger arms on the team as well. So, uh... I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him throw the ball down the field in that particular situation. Sanu with the incompletion today now three for five this year's for 74 yards and one touchdown when throwing it. Empty backfield for Dodd. And this one will be whistled dead again. I think Watkiss called for the illegal false start again. Play. False start. Offense. Number 71. Five yard penalty. Replay. Second down. Now Watkins is playing right tackle mm -hmm. instead of Art Forced, the starter at that position. Force is a on the Outland Trophy watch list. And twice Watkins, Watkins, the 6'7 sophomore from Corum, New York, has been whistled for false starts on this drive. Second and 13. Dodd to throw incomplete intended for Deering Deering is the young man that made the big catch the 45 yard catch leading to the game winning field goal a week ago against UConn. So now it comes to third down again for Rutgers entered the day Kurt at 28 percent last in the Big East and they haven't helped themselves today they're 0 for 3. Yeah they're 0 for 3 and uh They've got to make something happen. What's happening is that they're, they're, they're getting these penalties and they're going back five yards, up three yards, and back five yards. This will be the final play of the first quarter. Dodd to throw. It's complete. Penalty marker in the secondary away from where the ball was caught by Mark Harrison. Harrison, a week ago, caught the game tying touchdown pass against UConn. A 52 yarder with 353 left in the game. Holding defense. Number 21. That penalty is declined. He's all in play. First down. The holding penalty on Donnie Dixon declined, so instead Rutgers will keep the completion to Harrison. 
It was the final play of the first quarter when Rutgers finally got its main first down of the day. A block kick leading to a three yard touchdown run by Trent Steelman has produced the only point so far. And as we head to the second quarter of the Meadowlands, it's Army on top of Rutgers by a touchdown. Big crowd here at the Meadowlands today, and the Army has its contingent in the end zone to our right. Bob Picozzi, along with College Football Hall of Famer Kurt Warner, glad you've joined us for this 37th meeting between Army and Rutgers. They have split the first 36, 18 and 18. Start of the second quarter, Rutgers on the move following its first first down of the day. Handoff Jordan Thomas, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Chad. Little John, six foot junior from Houston, Texas. Army is getting a lot of penetration up the field, uh, not only with their uh, defensive linemen, but also with their linebackers. With this double flex defense, uh, it's causing some uh, some issues. He comes up inside, basically untouched on this particular play. So obviously. They've got to make the uh, right adjustments uh, offensively up front. Out of the Wildcat, Sanu will keep it himself. And he'll get back the yardage that Thomas lost on that last play, but that will leave a third and 10 for Rutgers. The stop made by Jarrett Mackey, whose brother AJ is also a defensive tackle here at Army. They come from Snellsville, Georgia. Scarlet Knights one for four on third down. They need 10 to keep this drive alive. Dodd looks to the sideline for the play. Three receivers to the left. Four man rush. Dodd pump fakes throws has Deering across the middle. First and goal. LB Brown made the tackle. Deering a true freshman from Tampa. Seventh ninth catch of the year. Deering finds a, uh, a, a dead spot in the zone here and uh, gets up the field for a uh, nice play. They, they needed this is the first big third down conversion they've had thus far. Big block on that play by Watkins who twice has been whistled for false starts. Out of the Wildcat it's Sanu. And another false start. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense, number 75, five yard penalty, first down. Well, don't you think that number 71, Devin Watkins, breathed a sigh of relief when he just heard the numbers 7 5 called for a change? That was Antoine Lowry. Well, these guys have got to get a fine focus down here inside that red zone. They're making way too many mistakes. Uh, they're uh, they're moving forward five yards and then they're going back five yards and they're putting themselves in third and long situations uh, more than once. Fourth penalty total in 25 yards for Rutgers who averages 56 yards in penalties per game. Sanu out of the Wildcat fakes the handoff runs to his right look out gets inside the five 
Steve Erzinger made the stop. Sanu makes a great ball fake. He, he, he does a great job of looking at his read, and uh, he can get up the field uh, fairly forcefully when he, when he needs to. Second and goal from the four. Sanu did not venture very far to play his college football. He's from South Brunswick, New Jersey, just down the street from the Rutgers campus. And he'll stay on the field out of the Wildcat. Keeps it himself. Good stiff arm. That's near the goal line. He'll be short. Dixon tried to tackle him at the line of scrimmage, but Sanu used the old stiff arm. How are you? Are you big on using the stiff arm in your Penn State Seahawk days? Well, you know what? You've got to do what you need to do to get past the defender. And, uh, you know, if I had to throw it out there, I would. So it's a it's a great weapon to use. So the third and goal, they need about two feet. Two tight end look. Sanu himself, and he loses two yards on the play. Little job with the stop. Now Greg Schiano has in San Santee one of the best place kickers in the country. And he's sending him out there to settle for three. Crowd doesn't like the decision, but I think what they really don't like is the Rutgers offense. Well, not in that particular play. They uh, they ran to the outside twice, and then this particular play, they go back up inside. I, you know, why not go back outside? San Santee nine for 13 this year, tied for the most field goals in the Big East. Made a 34-yarder to beat UConn with 13 seconds left last week. This will be about a 29-yarder, and he's got it. It's his 40th career field goal, third most in Rutgers history. So it took. 19 plus minutes for Rutgers to finally get on the board. And they do it on the field goal by San Santee. 10 46 remaining first half, 7 3 Army. It's the first Army Rutgers meeting at the Meadowlands Complex since 1996 and the first at this magnificent new home of the New York Giants and the New York Jets. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Kurt Warner. Rutgers just drove 60 yards in 13 plays in 6 minutes and 53 seconds settling for a 19 yard field goal for San Santee and that's certainly not what they wanted on that possession. They wanted the touchdown, Kurt. After the success that Rutgers had offensively last week against UConn, how surprised are you at Rutgers' lack of success in moving the football so far today? I'm not surprised at all uh, with regards to uh, Army's defense. Uh, they are a, a very vulnerable opponent. Uh, obviously, they've scouted Rutgers as well. Uh, you've got a young quarterback secondly that's in play and I'm sure that they're doing some things to uh, sort of mess with him uh, as much as they possibly can. Army is are truly the road warriors. They have won four straight road games three of them this year. 
It's the first time that Army has won three road games in a season since 1967. And they still have another road game to go later in the year against Kent State. It's the first of two visits to the New York City area for Army this year. They will return on November 20th on the other side of the Hudson River to play Notre Dame at Yankee Stadium. And when Rutgers and Army meet next season, that too will be at Yankee Stadium. San Santee to kick off. It will be short. Josh Jackson from his 12. Big mistake there will cost Army field position. Of course, he's fortunate that when the ball popped out and went out of bounds, where no one in a red shirt could fall on it. Here's from Jackson's perspective. Well, it looks like he was tracking it pretty much all the way in. And I, I don't know, maybe he just took his eyes off the ball uh, at the last second. Uh, could have been a win aid, it could have been anything, but uh, typically. You know his job is to catch the ball number one and concentrate and uh, and make a play. Did you ever return punts? Uh, kickoffs. Yes, I did uh, at one time. Here's the handoff to Hassam. Gets out to the 20-yard line. Hassam began his collegiate career at the Air Force Academy before transferring. Is. His dad was a West Point alum and is a retired colonel. Comes from Delafield, Wisconsin, where he was the state shot put champion. Second and one. Pass him again. And he's got the first down. Now, throughout our conversations this week with uh, Greg Schiano, Kurt, mm -hmm. he kept telling us over and over again about how important the fullback's role is in this triple option explain what he meant by that well obviously he's the uh, the first part of the uh, that option and uh, with Hassam uh, he's a, he's a pretty good sized guy uh, 6 3 235 so when he hits up inside uh, he, he hits up inside with a lot of force and uh, if you're not keen on him then he's going to explode up the field for eight nine ten yards I mean obviously last week uh, he ran for 144 yards, 25 carries, so they weren't exactly looking for him in that particular that particular day. They were trying to stop the outside game. He had a very successful day going back up inside. The injured player is Manny Abreu, and this is how Army distributes its running game among the skilled position players. Well, as you can see, the slot backs are uh, obviously carrying the ball the majority of the time, 155 attempts. Uh, but uh, that fullback uh, plays a key role. So they have a, a nice balance between, you know, the fullback, the slot back, and the quarterback. And the man that makes it go is Steelman, who comes from a very athletic family. His dad played football at Appalachian State. Media. Timeout. And the Rutgers training staff continues to work on Manny Abreu, the 6'3, 245 pound junior from nearby Union City, New Jersey. We'll step aside, 7 3 Army. Army does a lot of, of cutting. Uh, I wouldn't call it chop blocking, but they, they do cut. They go after the knee, so you got to protect yourself when you're playing against these guys. And they're, they're quick off the ball. And uh, you, know, you get, get tangled up inside. They don't call this a collision sport for nothing. Yeah. It's unfortunate. They have had a number of guys with torn ACL. These are linebackers, 30, 31, 53 over the last uh, three months. So they're really thin yeah. at this, uh, at the linebacker yeah, position. They're, most, they're, they're real mostly, yeah. They're mostly backup guys who hurt, yep. but, but 
You're right, affects their depth. Rutgers junior linebacker Manny Abreu being helped off the field with an apparent knee injury. Abreu had a terrific game last week in the win over Connecticut. Ten tackles, one tackle for a loss, one forced fumble. Greg Schiano considers Abreu his best pass rushing linebacker, so that will be a significant loss if he can't get back. First and ten Army leading it 7-3. Seelman, there's the pitch. And Raymond Maples with his first carry of the day. Ball popped loose out of bounds, but not before Army picks up another first down. Brandon Bing made the stop. Let's look at the third option here. The quarterback is going to make his read, and uh, he pitches uh, right at the right time. I mean, it was uh, it's a the, the great timing for this for this to take place with the triple option. Maples, a freshman from Philadelphia. Nothing happening there on the quick dive up the middle. Kasim Green, Charlie Noonan making the stop for Rutgers. Rutgers with a shutout this season against Norfolk State. Joining Boise State as the only two teams in the country with at least one shutout in each of the last five years. They allowed only 25 yards rushing in that game. Rutgers is number nine in the country in scoring defense. The pass is nearly intercepted by David Rowe. Intended for David Brooks and that time Steelman hung that one up a little bit too. A little bit too much air under it. Defense number 96. Five yard penalty, replay, sick and down. Another huge mistake, Kurt, by Rutgers. The offsides on Charlie Noonan. And Army trying to take advantage of that as well. Right here, yeah, they are th that quick motion going across, sort of filling the defense out. The defense reacts to it, and Army uh, takes a shot down the field. Handoff, Hassett, huge hole. He could be gone. Green runs him down from behind at the six yard line. Jared Hassan nearly took it the distance. You know, this triple option is a big play offense. I mean, they, they, they hit up inside, they hit up inside, and then all of a sudden they go off tackle with the fullback, and he scats down the field. Nice execution on this particular play. First and goal right at the seven. Mealy may have picked up one. Stop just outside the five. Charlie Noonan made the stop. Of course, also when you when you're going against this style of offense, there's is there not an eventual wear down effect on the defense that they keep pounding it and pounding it inside? Well, you know, Army uh, is number one with regards to a time of possession at 35 minutes a game. Hassan still on his feet. Touchdown. Great second effort by uh, Hassan on this particular play. Same play you saw him break the big one on. He comes back again after the counter play before that and uh, goes right off tackle and uh, gets in the end zone. Great second effort on that particular play. Seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Hassan, who did almost everything himself on that possession in to attempt the extra point is Alex Carlton and he's now 28 for 28 this year this is an army team that won six games total in the two years before Rich Ellerson got there they're four and two this year and they're up 11 today
Sometimes the most effective plays, Kurt, are the simple plays. It's all about execution, and Army's execution was perfect. Well, sometimes I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes in this particular situation, uh, you, you find a, a weak spot, and I think they found the spot to go after. Kicking off will be Campbell, Lafedge, and Robinson back deep. Lafedge from his own seven. Gets it out to the 29 yard line. Army, one of the most effective running teams in the country, and this is how they rank. National. We told you they're last in passing. Well, the flip side is they're ninth in rushing. Well, you know what? Uh, if you have an offense that's specifically uh, focused on running and you do it well, then why change it? So let's see if Chase Dodd can do this week what he did last week. His his performance last week, Kurt, got measurably better by the end of the game, which only stands to reason it was his first college start. They'll need that sort of improvement from beginning of the game end of the game again today down 11 pass across the middle caught by the tight end Jefferson short pickup Jefferson is on the watch list for the John Mackey Award which goes to the best tight end in the country. Greg Schiano says of his quarterback Chase Dodd he's very comfortable coming from such an established high school program where they throw it all over the lot and coming from a football family have prepared him well for this assignment. There's Tom Savage who injured his hand against Tulane creating the opportunity for Don. Here's the handoff to Thomas stopped by McNary. But it was a coming out party, Kurt, last week for Chase Dodd against the UConn Huskies. Well, as you can see right here, uh, he finds some time, and this is just a well-executed play all the way down the field. And uh, here he scrambles. He's buying time. It looks like he's down a couple times, and he gets out of the pocket and gets down the field for a nice play. And again, he engineered two late scoring drives. The Scarlet Knights scored 10 points in the last four minutes of the game to beat UConn by three in their Big East opener. On third down, Dodd goes down. He's hit by Erzinger, the linebacker, with the big sack. That's his first sack of the season. There's a penalty marker on the play. For an injured player, rather, Desmond Stapleton. Rutgers can't afford to lose any more offensive well, What you have here is uh, a number of guys coming up in the middle and uh, Erzinger gets through uh, basically unscathed, un untouched. Uh, it's more like a delay type of uh, blitz. And uh, sometimes for the young guys, uh, it takes them a little while to kind of figure out that this thing is happening. Well, pass protection has been a huge problem for Rutgers this year. They're 114th in the country in sacks allowed, 7th in the 18 Big East. The two Army sacks today mean that Rutgers quarterbacks have been sacked. 20 times already this year. As you can see, the uh, backers are coming from uh, from a long ways back, and uh, it's more of a uh, sort of like a delayed kind of safety, free safety blitz, strong safety blitz. And uh, you know, he thinks he's got uh, the ability to uh, you know more time, having more time to throw the football, and they're on you before uh, the clock goes off in your head. How susceptible is a quarterback with his? relative lack of experience at the college level to being sacked well obviously at the high school level you don't see the sophistication that you're going to see at the college level and in this particular case he was probably thinking that uh, he had his right reads in play but uh, you know he, he just you know it's it's a, it's a it's a conscious thing that he has to, to be aware of that the uh, safeties are coming down the middle Delagana into punt, standing at his own 12. Josh Jackson is deep. And Jackson misjudged it and will pay the price as it takes a Rutgers bounce before it stops at the 16 yard line. Failing to catch that ball cost Army at least 10 yards in field position. So Army up 11 will take over. There's a look at Erzinger who had the sack. His sister Allison was a track and field All-American at Oklahoma State, a terrific athletic family. 
So it will be Army football. Coming up today on the Capital One Halftime Report, we'll look back at week six with the plays of the week. We will also chat with the superintendent of cadets at West Point, Lieutenant General David Huntoon Jr. Kurt and I will have first half highlights and analysis. On first down, Malcolm Brown brought down by Antonio Lowry at around the 19 yard line. Last series they go up the middle. This one uh, they're going uh, outside with the uh, fly sweep. Looks like with a brew out of there with the injury, Duran Harmon, the backup strong safety, is playing at a brew's outside linebacker spot, and they run to that side of the field. Huge gain for Steelman. Before he steps out of bounds at the 41 yard line, Patrick Mealy sprung him with a block in the backfield. This is a triple option effect again. Big guy up inside with Hassan. Pull it out, take off around the corner with the quarterback. All basically an off tackle play. So Harmon, who is replacing a brew at that outside linebacker spot is 47 pounds lighter than Manny Abreu. Steelman the late pitch fumble Rutgers ball recovered by Antonio Lowry. First time that Brian Cobbs got his hands on the football today and he didn't have his hands on the ball very long. Only four fumbles with regards to this particular offense so uh, obviously the timing was off on this play. Looks like the pitch was there a little bit behind him but uh, he's he's got to track it. He's got to yep. track that ball and take it. Let's look at it again. It's the option pitch obviously on the sweep option the, the third option and uh, he just did not uh, get that ball inside his hand. Now I imagine once or twice in your career you you lost the football on a fumble. How does it make you feel. Well uh, not happy not happy. <laughs> And he died goes down again and there's McNary. McNary's first appearance just off Broadway has been spectacular. It's his second sack already today. You've got a twist up inside and uh, basically he just goes from one side to the other side. Uh, it, the design play he's going to find an opening and it's very difficult for sometimes for the lineman to pick that up. McNary is on the watch list for the Bronco Nagurski Ronnie Lott and Vince Lombardi awards the outstanding senior defensive end from Houston his second sack today Dodd to throw down the middle deep in and out of the hands of Deering. coverage provided by Donovan Travis. This Army defense up front, its front four is giving uh, Rutgers offensive line fits. They're doing a lot of twist games and they're making it very difficult for these guys to pick up. Stapled in the offensive left tackle for Rutgers, who was shaken up on the last possession, is back on the field. As is Desmond Wynn, the left guard who left with an injury earlier today. Dodd pressured again. Throws across the middle. Is it caught? It is. Ours. No. Now the. Now the. So do you want the bad news or the worst news for Rutgers? The bad news is the, the deepest official said the ball hit the turf wasn't caught, but it doesn't matter because Rutgers is called for holding. Well, you know, we talked about the uh, size difference earlier, but that just doesn't seem to be the uh, the case right now. And Stapleton uh, just uh, is having a rough day with regards to the holding calls. So we've had uh, illegal procedures. Uh, we've had Somebody holding has been declined by Army. Fourth down. So since it was an incompletion, they'll decline the penalty and force Rutgers to punt, which is something that Delagana. Has already done four times today. Averaging 35 and a half yards per return. Back deep to return is Josh Jackson. Okay. 
Jackson lets it go over his head and it goes out of bounds to the one yard line. That was a uh, great kick. That ball jumps laterally on the one yard line. Sure wish you could control your approach shots like that, don't you? On the golf course? <laughs> that again. looks like one of my golf shots. Looks like one of mine with my driver when I'm trying to hit it 250 down the middle. <laughs> Delagana, a senior from Templeton, California, his seventh punt inside the 20. And now the crowd imploring the Rutgers defense to keep Army pinned in. On first down, Stapleton to throw from his end zone, throwing deep, incomplete. Brooks was open, but he overthrew him. Pressure applied by Charlie Noonan in the Army backfield. Every so often, uh, Army will take a shot down the field, and uh, why not take a shot down the field? It's first and uh, and ten on the one. Why not see if you can make a big play? So now it's second and ten. Line of scrimmage just inside the two-yard line. Last time Army had the ball, they went 89 yards for a touchdown. Handoff, Hassan, and he's got the first down. Just like that, he gets the Black Knights out of trouble. Brandon Bing ran him down. He is taking that plate almost to the off tackle hole and uh, finding the lane uh, up inside because you have to respect the quarterback and the pitch play which makes it a very difficult defense to defend. Look at the rushing differential it reflects the scoreboard differential. Hassan again. Picks up another three that gives him 88 yards on seven carries. Steve Bo Harness made the stop. Rich Ellerson told us Hassan forces opponents to defend the option. He's very physical and makes people bounce off him. Obviously you can see that because he's had a couple of runs down here in the end zone and then a couple big runs where he took the first hit and kept moving. First and 10 Black Knights up 11. Steelman to throw quickly has Brooks. Stop made by Rowe. Very close to the first down marker. Uncharacteristic for Army to throw that particular play. A quick hitch to the left side. Steelman three for five today for 29 yards. Third down and one. Steelman, look at the footwork. He was stopped behind the line of scrimmage, just managed to dance away from the tackler and get the first down. It looked like he had penetration right in front of him on that particular play. And he still gets away. Yeah, he did have penetration. He sidesteps it and gets up the field. Now that is an outstanding play. Scott Vallone had him down around the ankles, but Steelman stepped right out of it. Clock continues to run. Two minutes remaining, first half. Handoff Hassan. This time he's stopped by Lowry, who is third in the Big East in tackles, senior from Miami. This is Rutgers' last non conference game of the season. The rest of the way, nothing but Big East brethren Pitt, USF, Syracuse, Cincinnati, Louisville, and West Virginia. And speaking of Cincinnati, what a tremendous win last night for the Bearcats over Louisville as Zach Caleros threw five touchdown passes, and they needed all five of them, three of them to bend. Steelman, plenty of protection, looking long, and he has his man. Brian Cobbs, who fumbled the football on the last Army possession, makes the catch. That's his first reception of the season, the sophomore from St. Charles, Missouri. Nice downfield throw uh, by Steelman on that particular play. Play action, finds a wide open guy, or finds a guy in the uh, right slot. 
Steelman to throw again. Looking for Cobbs again. He has him again. He got behind Deron Harmon. How shocked are you, Kurt, that Army's putting the ball in the air, A, so often, and B, so successfully? Well, this is not this is not Army, is it? This is not the right Army team. We're used to watching these guys run the ball up and down the field. Uh, you know what? All I can say is that this is a nice mixture of plays. Last year, when these two teams met at West Point, Rutgers won a 27-10. And you know how many passing yards Army had? 16. Already today, 72 yards, five for seven is Steelman. And Army really has this Rutgers defense back on its so heels. Wh what we're seeing is we're seeing a nice balance of the running attack, and now we're seeing another, you know, layer that's being added to it, and that's the passing game now, where they're rolling to the right, rolling to the left, running quick hitch uh, routes, uh, three-step drops, uh, just a variety of plays that you would just not expect Army to make. Timeout was taken by Army with 53 seconds to go. Very impressive drive. I'm impressed with this drive. I really am. Remember, it's a drive that started following the Delegana punt back at the two yard line. They had to convert a third and ten. Steelman looking to throw again. Has his man Brooks. First down at the five. They'll stop the clock to advance the chains. Most of the yardage on this wow. possession has been through the air. Wow. And, and again, at the risk of repeating ourselves, this is an Army team that is last <laughs> in the country in passing. Dead last. 120 schools, they're 120. Whistle before the ball was snapped. Prior to the snap, timeout. Rutgers. This team timeout. Well, I, I can tell you something right now. They do not look like the uh, last place passing team in America today. So obviously they've uh, they made a couple of adjustments and made some changes, and uh, it seems to be working for them quite well. Steelman is six for eight for 91 yards. And this is against the Rutgers team, which is second in the Big East. And ninth in the country in scoring defense. The Scarlet Knights only allow 14 points per game. They've already allowed 14 today. And with 33 seconds left in the half, Army has it first and goal at the five. And Army has done it on this particular possession, mostly by putting the football in the air. Like, like we're saying, like I've said, I'm very uncharacteristic for Army to throw the ball this much. And you can see right here, he's rolling to the left. He makes an excellent throw, excellent play. You got man coverage, and he finds his mark again. He rolls to the right again. And uh, hits a cop on that particular play. First and goal, Steelman on the keeper. The late pitch went in and out of the hands, but out of bounds. Intended for Mealy. Alex Silvestro had great penetration on the play. Loss of two, clock stops. And they're going to say it was a forward pass. So it's an incompletion. So instead of a two yard loss, we'll go back to the five yard line. It doesn't matter whether you throw it overhand, underhand, through your legs, behind the back. If it goes forward, it's a pass. And if it doesn't, no one catches it. It's an incompletion, and you go back to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal. Steelman wants to throw, looking for Brooks in the end zone. Overthrew him. David Rowe with the coverage. Third down and goal. Now, wouldn't it be just like Army that who has thrown the ball so often to put the ball in the belly of Hassan and see what he can do on third and goal? Well, that's always an option for them, especially with the way they're running the football right now. Uh, but third and five on the goal line, on the five, they may have to put it up in the air. Army four for six on third downs today. They did give it to Hassan. Penalty marker on the play. I think. Yep. Offense, number seven, five yard penalty. Third down. Well, we know Hassan's quick, but he's not that quick. He's not that quick. You're exactly <laughs> right on that one. Actually, it looks like he had two guys in the backfield moving on that one. Yep. 
Now Army, one would think it will be forced to throw on third and goal from the ten. Oh wow. Yeah, Mealy and uh, Hassan uh, uh, on that particular play. Wide to the left, Brooks. Wide to the right, Bar. Slot left, Brown. Steelman on the keeper himself gets it to the four. And let's see if Army lets the clock run all the way down and then uses a timeout and tries to kick a field goal to put themselves up 17 3 at the half. That's what they're going to do. Well, at least the Army. first part of it. There's Second. your timeout. Team. Timeout. Leaving Third. Army with one timeout left. So all of Greg Schiano's fears at trying to defend this triple option have come to fruition in the first 30 minutes today. Well, then you throw in the other option, whereas now they're throwing the football. So you've got a triple option plus a pass. So you have four things to worry about. So you go back in the uh, locker room at halftime and you try to uh, figure out what you need to do and get some offense going here because right now offensively they're just not having a whole lot of success. So following the timeout in to attempt the field goal will be Alex Carlton. He missed his only attempt today. He's four for 11. Although part of those misses were due to some protection issues earlier in the year. His 22 career field goals, the eighth most in West Point history. Line of scrimmage, the 10, making it a 20-yard attempt. Carson Hami will snap, and Colin Walk will hold. So Army has gone 89 yards for a touchdown, and now they've gone 98 yards for a field goal. And a the Black Knights are up by 14 at halftime. Well, you know, let's talk about ball control. Let's talk about the big plays. I, I think you've, you've seen a, a number of combinations that have come into play for Army uh, as, they, as, as this uh, game has taken place. So it is 17-3 at halftime. Army looking for win number five, which would equal last year's total. To the Capital One halftime report. It's halftime at the new Meadowlands Stadium between Army and Rutgers. I'm Bob Picosi. Week six in college football saw a change at the top of the polls, trick plays, last second wins, and unforgettable performances. Here now are the plays of the week from last week in college football.
touchdown. Touchdown, touchdown. Newton with his fourth touchdown, a career high. Cincinnati had 480 yards of total offense in 30 minutes of football. Kick three, 10, five, touchdown, Peter Martinez. Same play, and that one is touchdown, Tigers! A flatable over the middle at the 5, 2, 1, touchdown, South Carolina! Tucker in the end zone, got it! A perfect strike by Steven Garcia. Floats it high upfield, and this one is caught by Jeffrey. Oh, what a catch! It's over! South Carolina has knocked off number one! You know, it was, it was a big win. I don't even know what to say right now, to tell you the truth. When we come back, the superintendent at West Point joins us in the booth for a live interview. It's next on the Capital One Halftime Report. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. It is halftime at the Meadowlands Stadium with Army leading Rutgers 17 to 3. I'm Bob Bacosi. Delighted to be joined by the superintendent of cadets at the United States Military Academy, Lieutenant General David Huntoon. And General, I, I guess it's a silly question, but you have to like what you see in the first half. Well, we love it. Now, Rutgers is a great opponent, but we're loving this halftime score. Army's doing very well this year. And tell me a little bit about uh, how pleased you are with uh, what Rich Ellerson has done since he's come to West Point. Yeah, Rich Ellerson's a terrific football coach. We love his attitude towards the football team. They are cadets first. He's a leader of character, and that's the fundamental approach we take at West Point to leadership. And of course, uh, playing sports at the military academies is really unlike at any of the other NCAA institutions. Tell us a little bit about how the academy uh, views the role of athletics in the overall picture at West Point. Yeah, at West Point, uh, every cadet's an athlete. So we have these great 25 intercollegiate teams at the Division I level, or we have club sports, which are very, very good. And we also require that every other cadet play an intramural sport. So athletics are fundamental to the success of our leaders at West Point. Now, uh, at West Point, are, are athletes, uh, are they, uh, is their schedule permit them to spend as much time practicing as, as they would be at any other institution in the country? Well, actually, it's, it's tougher, I think, for athletes because they are held first and foremost to be accountable as cadets at West Point. So they do everything that every other cadet does. And on top of that, 
they're great athletes. So it's tough. I remember uh, chatting with a, a former NFL player once, asking him how he li liked West Point. He kind of, he said, well, I don't know that anyone likes it. You survive West Point. But uh, anything that I've done in my career, including the NFL, has been easy compared to the West Point experience. It really is an experience that challenges the, uh, the cadets and the student athletes 24 hours a day, isn't it? It is. Athletics is an important part of that experience, though. It's the crucible where we work on teamwork and discipline and leader development. Because remember, at the end of 47 months, these young men and women are going to lead the soldiers of the United States Army. And that's our bottom line. General, tell us about uh, what your, your feeling is and the Academy's feeling is about, about taking uh, the football to a, a venue such as this. I know this is the second of four games that you're playing this year in either an NFL or a Major League Baseball stadium with two more to go, the traditional battle with Navy at uh, Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, the Eagles home, and then you're going to play at Yankee Stadium. Right. How exciting is it for the uh, cadets to be able to play in these facilities? Uh, it's wonderful to come down here to the new Meadowlands Stadium. In fact, I'm enormously impressed by the Rutgers turnout today. Not to mention, everywhere I look, I see red. So my hat's off to Rutgers. Magnificent stadium, wonderful opportunity for our cadets to play here. Now it's been 14 long years since Army played in a bowl game, that magical 1996 season where you went 10 and 2 and went to the Independence Bowl. And here you are sitting at 4 and 2, up, up by 14 points at halftime. Uh, how hopeful are you that this could be the year that we'll see Army go back to a bowl game? Well, I feel very confident that this is an important year for Army football. Rich Ellerson has pulled together a tremendous program. We've got a lot of talent on the team this year. We win today. We're at five. One more. I think we're headed towards the bowl. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks very much. That's Lieutenant General David Huntoon. He's the superintendent of cadets at West Point. He's a happy man because Army is leading Rutgers 17-3 at the half. In a moment, Kurt Warner rejoins us. We'll take a look at first half highlights. on sticks, right? Outside, they're just uh... See, what they're doing now is they're taking that play and they're bouncing to the bouncing a little bit more to the outside. He's up, he's bouncing, he's up, he's bouncing. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. It is halftime at the new Meadowlands Stadium with Army leading Rutgers 17-3. I'm Bob Picozzi along with College Football Hall of Famer Kurt Warner. And Kurt, just how impressed are you at what we've seen from Army offensively in the first 30 minutes? Well, you know what? We've seen a number of different uh, facets of this particular game, especially, you know, the, the inside run, the mid zone, the outside, and then they're throwing in another option, which is the pass. So it's been a very impressive performance by Army. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. We also saw Army score on 89 yard and 98 yard drives. Well, you know what? They've also played some great defense as well. They've really confused the uh, quarterback uh, Dodds on this particular play. They're coming from the inside, from the outside, and they're going to a lot of twist games up inside. And they're just not giving him a whole lot of time to get comfortable in that pocket. And when he is stepping up, they have someone that, uh, you know, obviously that's in his face. And right here with the, with the big guy, Hassan, uh, on that particular play, he breaks to the outside. He goes up inside, breaks to the off tackle hole, and gets down the field uh, on a real nice play. Here, great second effort. He gets into the end zone. So he basically took the ball from one end of the field to the other end of the field on that particular drive. And the statistics certainly 
mirrored the scoreboard. Look at the rushing yards. That's been the biggest difference in the game. Rutgers has simply been unable to stop Army's running game. Well, now you throw the, the, the running game in, in, in there, and now you, you look at the 91 yards in passing, which we were not expecting to see 91 yards in passing from, uh, from Army. So uh, they are just making a number of uh, transitions and plays that we probably were not expecting to, to see. And of course, spectacular play by Trent Steelman. We've seen a little bit of everything from the quarterback engineering this attack. Well, you know, he's not afraid to run the ball up inside, and he is obviously the second option up inside, inside that zone. So uh, he's got a year under his belt. He knows what this offense is going to look like, and there you can see he's actually throwing the ball, and he makes a nice throw. He rolls here, play action again, and makes a nice throw with a crossing route on that particular play. Rutgers has beaten Army six straight times. Will that streak end today? What a halftime. A college football <laughs> Hall of Famer and a three-star general. What more can we do? Second half is next. not beaten Rutgers since October 18, 1997. That was a 37-35 Army win at West Point. But the Black Knights of the Hudson find themselves leading the Scarlet Knights from Piscataway, New Jersey by 14 at halftime. Welcome back to the new Meadowland Stadium. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Kurt Warner. Other action today in the Big East. Pittsburgh with a 35 14 lead over Syracuse. So that's a, a tremendous comeback effort Kurt for Dave Wanstead's Panthers after a heartbreaking loss last week to Notre Dame. Well, you know what? Uh, the thing about Wanstead and, and his teams is that, uh, you know, you're going to take that loss and then you're going to regroup and then you, you're going to get refocused again. And obviously, they've done a nice job today of refocusing. And the Big East week began on Thursday with West Virginia beating USF by a score of 20 to 6. The Mountaineers now 5 and 1. And last night, Cincinnati beating Louisville. Five touchdown passes by Zach Calero. So the Bearcats winning the Big East opener for both schools. It's now a final at the Carrier Dome. Pitt with the win wins its Big East opener. And Syracuse drops to one and one. The Orange had defeated USF in its conference opener. And uh, that, that's it for Big East play. Next week, UConn will be playing in Louisville. It's a bye week for the UConn Huskies. And not much action. The rest of the, the rest of the season will be all Big East play for Rutgers. This is the last non-conference game, and suddenly, uh, Kurt, the Scarlet Knights are, are in a dilemma here, and they're they're thinking small picture. All they're worried about is overcoming this 14-point deficit today. But in the bigger picture, they are three and two. Unless they come back today, they'll find themselves three and three. 
They got a nice streak going. They played in five consecutive bowl games, but somehow they need to get to six wins to keep that streak alive. Well, obviously, uh, you go in at halftime and uh, you need to make some adjustments. And Rutgers has to make some adjustments with his pass game, number one. And obviously, with this, uh, with this blocking up front, uh, they've given up a number of sacks today. Uh, they've been ranked in the bottom third with regards to sacks uh, prior to coming into this game and uh, they just can't seem to get that particular issue solved right now. So uh, yeah th this is uh, this is time for them to step up and play some football. This is the 11th consecutive year that Army will play a Big East opponent but they have not beaten a Big East opponent since the last time they beat Rutgers in 1997. Can they end that streak today? They're off to a great start, up 14. The second half kickoff is now. The new Meadowlands Stadium had opened April 10th of this year. Seating capacity of 82,566. It's the site of Super Bowl 48 in 2014. And today it is the site of the first college football game between two teams in the football bowl subdivision. And one of the big plays Kurt made in the first half was by that young man, number 53, Zach Watts. He blocked the field goal, which set up the first score of the day and really put Army in the driver's seat and they have yet to vacate that seat. We have seen a number of big plays but uh, sometimes it starts with the special team and uh, in that particular case uh, it's almost a reversal because uh, Rutgers uh, has been known for uh, blocking uh, kicks and punts. They blocked 46 over the last uh, 10 years under Coach Ciano. Second most in the country. The by second the way. most in the country. So obviously uh, th this is something that uh, you know Rutgers takes pride in but uh, they had it done to them in, at this particular uh, time. So it will be Army ball. Remember they won the toss and elected to defer before the opening kickoff. So kicking off for Rutgers will be San San T. To make that Teddy San San T is kicking off. Normally it's Teddy Delagana who handles the kickoff chores. And back deep will be Josh Jackson. Army up 14 gets the ball to start the second half. Josh Jackson short kick from his own 15. And Army may not know what to do with this field position. They're at the 32. The last two times that Army scored, they went 89 yards to score a touchdown and 98 yards to get a field goal, all of the last eight minutes of the half. So let's see, Kurt, what adjustments Rutgers made defensively at halftime to see if they can defend this triple option any more effectively. Steelman, the keeper, picks up perhaps three in the play. Tackle made by Antonio Lowry and also Kasim Green. Rutgers has.
been banged up since this game started. Manny Abreu, their outstanding outside linebacker, left with an apparent knee injury, hasn't returned. He's been replaced at that linebacker spot by backup strong safety Duran Harmon. Second and six. Malcolm Brown out to the 38 and a half. Stack uh, tackle made by Steve Boharness. Third down for the cadets. They have converted four of seven times. That's been a big problem, Kurt. Rutgers has been very good in its first five games at stopping opponents on third down. Not so good today. Steelman. Very close. Very close. Might have our first measurement of the day. Well, that's a third and about three. And uh, in third and three for Army, they're about 83% with regards to uh, getting the first down. So, you know, it's three yards in a cloud of dust type of uh, mentality. And uh, that seems to be working uh, for Army. They don't go backwards very often. Army will have the week off next week before hosting VMI on October 30th. Here's the reverse. Brooks gets a lead block from his quarterback, Steelman. About a five-yard pickup. Tackle made by Kasim Green, whose brother, Ray Graham, is a running back for the Pitt Panthers. We are seeing a lot of variety with these guys. You've got a little uh, the fly sweep coming across with a little trickeration here. Look at the quarterback here throwing a block. You don't usually get a quarterback blocking that that often, and that's very impressive from coming from a quarterback. Hand off. Hassan. Scott Ballone made the stop, leaving a third and one. Hassan now nine carries for 93 yards at 144 yards in the win over Tulane. By the way, Tulane is the only common opponent these two teams have played so far this year. Army beat Tulane 41 23. Rutgers lost to Tulane 17 14. Third and one. Steelman has it. Lowry made the stop. Requires a lot of patience to be a quarterback running this offense, doesn't it? You know, in that in this particular case, again, you get third and less than three. They're 83 percent. If you watch this particular play, he fakes up inside and he steps back, almost slides back, and then finds the hole to the off tackle, off tackle side. Steelman bobbled the snap, but still fell forward to pick up six. And that's what happens when you have a big fullback that's uh, that's making uh, a lot of headway up inside. And, and, and this year, to, from last year, their defense, uh, I mean, their uh, fullback, Hassan, uh, has really uh, been a big difference maker. He pulls two guys on him as he moves up inside. You have to respect that particular play. If not, uh, you know, they'll take advantage of it. Patrick Bealey throwing a key block on that last play. Hand off to Mealy. He's got the first down to the Rutgers 30. Kasim Green made the stop. And Army is picking up here in the third quarter where the Black Knights left off the end of the first half. This particular play, you get a counter. You've got a counter coming back against you. So now they run to the play side, play side, play side. This play, they come back and run a counter with Mealy. So uh, they are throwing a lot of things at uh, Rutgers at this particular time. And it seems to, they seem to be very comfortable uh, with what they're doing. Army enjoying the time of possession. Entering the game, they were averaging 35 minutes per game. Bo Harness with the stop on Hassan. Pickup of about two. Very seldom, Kurt, yep. when Army snaps the ball, does it result, does the play result in negative yardage? 
No, I, I don't think we've seen him go back uh, to, uh, in, a, in a negative position at any particular time. Maybe one or two plays, but I can't remember re re recalling any of those. Second and eight. Steelman. Green again with the stop. Greg Schiano considers Green and Lafedge his two best run stoppers in that secondary. So it'll be another third down. The Black Knights have converted both of them on this possession. Third and four. Only one turnover today. Army turned it over. Black Knights plus 11 in the turnover margin for the year. Hassan is stopped. This will be an interesting decision for Rich Ellerson. Line of scrimmage 23. So it will be fourth and three. Do you go for it? Or do you try a 40 yard field goal on a windy day? Longest field goal by Carlton this year is 42, and they're going to go for Looks it. Looks like they're going for it. Army is eight of nine on fourth down this year. Rutgers opponents are 0 for 5, so something has to give. Steelman to throw, looks incomplete. He had his open man was Cobbs, but he threw the ball by his feet. Scott Malone applying the pressure and Steelman got knocked down on the play and he took his helmet off and he's getting up slowly. So Rutgers continues its claim as the only team in the country not allowing a fourth down conversion this year. Opponents are now 0 for 6 so let's see Kurt, if it's a different and more effective Rutgers offense than we saw in the first half where they struggled. Chase Dodd, the quarterback, making his second career start. Looking for Harrison. Has it. Harrison went up in the air. Came down at the 45-yard line. Pick up a 22. The key for this play is that Doss had more time to throw the football. And if he gets some time to throw the football, he'll make the right throw and make the right decision. That's exactly what Rich Ellerson was telling us this week. He says when Dodd has time, he can really throw it. He is very poised and he improved dramatically last week during the Connecticut game. Good play fake. Dodd rolls right, and there's McNary with his third sack of the day, and a huge one. Back at the 28, that's minus 17. Josh McNary may be the best football player on this field today. Dodd has to get rid of the football on this play. Play action. He's got plenty of time. He's got to throw it out of bounds. He's outside of that particular marker. He's got to throw it out of bounds. Get rid of it. Throw it out of bounds. Tenth sack of the year for McNary. 28th career sack, most in West Point history. Dodd to throw, being pressured. And he just threw the ball for Sanu. Did Sanu keep his feet in? He caught it. But his feet were out of bounds. Pressure that time being applied by Jared Mackey. Josh McNary has appeared to be unblockable today. He is, uh, he's reaping havoc uh, uh, with that offensive line from the right side. He, you know, you get a lot of twist games going up inside, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, he's, uh, he's having an outstanding game today. Young man played only one year of high school football in Houston. His dad, George, is a retired Marine captain. His grandfather, Aaron Figs, fought in World War II. Dodd this time does have time, but eventually the protection broke down. The sack by Jared Mackey, but credit the Army secondary for the success on that play. Well, the Army secondary is uh, is playing very tough. Uh, let's see Personal the replay foul. on this one. Horse collar. Defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. 
First down. So Army gets its fifth sack but commits the horse collar penalty on Mackey. And that will keep this Rutgers possession alive. This is one of these things that mm -hmm. Rutgers should come back, score here, and somehow yeah. come on to win this game. And by the way, they're a long way from accomplishing yep. either of those exactly. two things. You'll look back at that play as a game changer. Army showing blitz and they came, but they came too early. Steven Anderson will be called for the offsides unless they say he was drawn. Our referee today is Todd Lapenta. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, number 71. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. Watkins. Watkins is having a tough day. Third false start. Good call, though. Yep, very good call. Obviously, he sees the linebacker flying up inside. He's thinking the ball is snapped, and uh, he uh, raises up too soon. Six penalties for 35 yards for the Scarlet Knights. That'll make it a first and 15. Dodd to throw, and there was a miscommunication there. Mason Robinson never looked back for the football. It could have also gone to uh, the tight end Jefferson as well. Uh, but obviously there was a, uh, a mix up in the, uh, the play call. Dodd had a prolific career at Burns High School in Lyman, South Carolina. He passed for 10,292 yards and 81 touchdowns in his high school career. Greg Schiano was actually scouting another player when he saw Dodd the first time and said his eyes popped out of his head when he saw the way Dodd could throw the ball. Jordan Thomas tries the left side, stopped by Jordan Trimble, which is a family with that has a great lineage at West Point. His brother Justin is a linebacker on this team. And their older brother Jeremy was an outstanding wide receiver, kick returner, and was a captain at West Point. Third and 13 for Rutgers. One receiver to the left and three to the right. Five man, six man army rush. The pass is caught, but short of the first down. Good effort after the catch by Deering. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Rutgers go for it here. Fourth looks to be about a yard and a half short. Obviously too far for a field goal. Down 14. And they will go for it. Scarlet Knights four for ten on fourth down this year. Army has stopped its opponents five of nine times on fourth down. Play clock down to seven. Here comes Army with the all-out blitz. Great catch across the middle made by Cordell Young, who is a third-down specialist out of the backfield. Is the best receiver out of that Rutgers backfield, and he demonstrated why on that play. Well, as you can see on this particular play, you've got man coverage, and uh, it's just a jump ball situation, and. Uh, you know, Dodd puts the ball right where it needs to go, and uh, now they're moving down the field. Let's go back to that one play where we had that 15-yard uh, penalty. Yep. Kept the drive alive. Kept the drive alive. Dodd and the blitz by the safety Dixon from the blind side. It was a misdirection by Dodd, and it was simply the wrong play call for the Army defense that time because Dixon came in untouched and when he saw Dodd pivot in his direction his eyes bulged out well, of his head. Got play action and it just oh. you know bootleg and it just bootlegs right in his lap. So great defensive call on that particular play. Six. Uh, Army is bringing these guys six and seven guys almost every particular down right now. Six sack today. For that Army defense. Second and 21. This time it's only a four man rush and another sack. The same result. It's hard for a quarterback to get into rhythm when he's getting this type of pressure put on him, especially when you're a freshman. And 
uh, you're trying to get something going. Jared Mackey with his second sack on this Rutgers possession. He was the one that was called for the horse collar after his last sack, which kept the drive alive. So now it is third and 31. Very thin playbook when it comes to this down and distance. Especially when you know they're going to bring pressure on you again. This time Army rushes five. Dodd complete to Deering. It will be well short of the first down at the 34 yard line. This could be four down territory again. Otherwise, you're looking at a 51 yard field goal. Well, you're down 17 to 3. You're inside uh, there. Uh, too close to punt, too yeah. far to kick the yeah. field goal. Might as well go for it. Rutgers already has converted one fourth down on this drive. Still 10 seconds left in the play clock. Dodd to throw. Runs to the sideline. And he's not going to get there. Penalty marker on the play. Far sideline. Again, a great job. Either one of two things are mm -hmm. happening here, Kurt. Either the Army secondary is just having providing outstanding coverage, or Dodd just isn't seeing things as well as you would need to see. I think it's a combination of both. Holding defense. Number 30. Wow. Senior penalty from the previous spot. First down. They have been aided by the uh, penalty uh, bug Plus. here on Plus. two particular situations where they had stopped them on the third and fourth down. Yep. First time Rutgers would have had to punt. Mm -hmm. Instead they got the first down. This time Rutgers would have turned the ball over on downs. Timeout. Army. Army calls a timeout and Rich Ellerson is looking for an explanation from referee Todd Lapenta. It's been a long drive in terms of minutes and seconds for Rutgers, but will it translate into some points? Out, isn't oh, he? It's like shot out of a cannon. You know, but on film, he doesn't, you know, he's not looking like he's looking today on film. He has some motor. Wow. Tim, I meant uh, Rutgers just can't, they can't do anything with this guy. And and Dodd, obviously Dodd is a freshman and the game has uh following an army timeout first and 10 Rutgers at the army 24 it's a Rutgers drive that has been kept alive by two army penalties resulting in automatic first downs Dot out of the shotgun army showing blitz again handoff Martinick a two yard loss now remember in college football unlike the pros statistically the sack yardage comes off the team's rushing total. And Army has seven sacks today. So with that loss of two by Martinick, that means that Rutgers rushing total today is minus 22 yards. And that is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Did Joe Paterno teach you that? It's pretty simple. You've got to go forward, not backwards. 
Dodd. Pump fake. Looking long. Wants Harrison for it all. Boy, did the wind knock that down. What a late flag. This is going to be pass interference on Army. The I think Army. that call was influenced by the uh, crowd noise. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, it looked like a great big hand from the sky knocked the ball. It just stopped. The wind absolutely knocked that ball out of the air. In fact, I wonder if it was catchable. And the flag came so late. Pass interference. Defense. Number 14. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. Push out. Well, on my count, partner, that's three, right? Yep. On this drive. Let's watch it. Oh. It looks like Harrison is trying to, to break back to the ball. And obviously he's protesting while he's sitting down. But uh, I don't know. Was it a catchable ball? It almost it looked like the ball was deflected, except yeah. it wasn't. So for the third time on this Rutgers drive, an Army penalty has given Rutgers an automatic first down. Hand off Martinet. Stop made by Steven Anderson. What an athletic family Anderson comes from. There's Savage, the backup quarterback. He hurt his hand against Tulane. Now, of course, the obvious question is, who's the starting quarterback once Savage becomes healthy because he's approaching that point? When we asked Greg Schiano that. He said, look, I will cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't have to decide between quarterbacks now, so I won't. We always approach each game as a one game season. Our quarterback this week is Chase Dodd. This will be whistled dead. Another false start. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 10, five yard penalty, replay, second down. Tight end DC Jefferson this time called for the false start. Savage, by the way, also very heavily recruited, and it was a, a great recruiting success for Rutgers to get him out of Springfield, Pennsylvania. He got the starting job as a true freshman a year ago. But he injured his hand against Tulane, and he just resumed full practice this week. He is not yet 100%. Greg Schiano says he would be available to play today were something to happen to Doc. And off to Thomas. Stop made by Mackey, but that's uh, something to look forward to down the line. Well, Greg Schiano's not looking forward to it. The media certainly yeah. is. The old quarterback controversy, and it's especially a controversy because that young man, Savage, is only a sophomore. Well, but you've got uh, two talented uh, quarterbacks uh, that are going to nice be competing problem. for the job. Yeah, so it's a nice problem to have. Dodd looks to the sideline. Third and eight. Two wide receivers to each side. And another penalty. Another false start. Prior to the snap. False start. Offense. Number 71. Five yard penalty. Replay. Go down. That one will be called on Barbieri. So, Kurt, with this tremendous Army pass rush, that absolutely has to be impacting all these false starts. You're right. Uh, you know, you've got assignments that you need to pick up, and uh, guys are trying to sort it out, and they're just they're jittery right now. And that's why the Army is, uh, is making these guys play. It's somewhat uh, uncertain. I was trying to block that guy, McNary. I'd false start, too. Quick toss to the left. Sanu breaks a tackle. He's going to be short of the first down by about two yards and Greg Shiano will have lots of time to think about what to do because that will end the third quarter fourth and two 17 three will Rutgers try to keep the drive alive on fourth down and go for it again Army trying to end a six game losing streak in the series with Rutgers
Bob McCosey along with College Football Hall of Famer Kurt Warner back at the new Meadowland Stadium. Just beginning the fourth quarter. Army leads Rutgers 17-3. Decision time for the Scarlet Knights. Fourth and two from the three-yard line. And as we look out onto the field, we see a quarterback and not a kicker. So they will try to go for it. It's the third time that they have gone for it on fourth down on this possession. Empty backfield. Don throws. Touchdown. Cordell Young. His second catch of the day. The first one was a conversion on fourth down. This one is his first touchdown of the year. And despite the fact, Kurt, that Army has absolutely outplayed Rutgers on offense, defense, and special teams, all of a sudden we look up, and with this extra point, Rutgers will be only a touchdown away. Well, you've had a number of uh, penalties that have aided Rutgers in this particular situation. San Santee into kick the extra point. So on the first play of the fourth quarter, Rutgers scores on a touchdown pass from Chase Dodd to Cordell Young. Don't look now, but Rutgers is only one score down. Tom Savage looking from the sideline. It took Rutgers 45 minutes and three seconds to finally get into the end zone for the first time today. There's the man that caught the pass, Cordell Young. And there's your scoring drive info 77 yards, 15 plays, 8 minutes and 51 seconds. A drive kept alive by three Army penalties, which gave Rutgers automatic first downs. Well, when you have uh, uh, those type of opportunities, especially when you have what they're called just a given play, uh, you know, it, it keeps the drive alive, and they were able to take advantage of it. One thing that Rutgers has not done today is they have not turned the ball over. There's only been one turnover in the game. Army leads the country in turnover margin. Rutgers leads the Big East. San Santee kicks off Jackson from his own 11. And Wayne Warren made the stop at the 23 yard line and from there Army takes over. Let's see if that Rutgers defense will be inspired by the first Rutgers touchdown of the day. I mean I, it's really I'm, I'm amazed Kurt yeah. when you watch this game how Army has dominated and yet you look up at the scoreboard and it's only a seven point margin. Well if you look at that last series uh, they're starting now to get Doss to get rid of that ball a little bit sooner. Steelman hands to Hassan. Good start to the drive. Five-yard pickup. Tackle made by Steve Boharness, who a year ago against Army blocked the punt and returned it for a touchdown. Oh my goodness. 
goodness, look at that. Man, those are big numbers. What's the last time you've seen anything like that? I don't think I've seen that. 247 to uh, minus four with regards to Rutgers. That's a. And if you've seen it, it certainly has not been in a seven point game. No, not at all. Zach Peterson, the Army center, shaken up on that play. He'll be replaced by Thomas Hagen, whose dad was an offensive lineman at Navy. I wonder how that went over when he said, hey, Dad, I'm going to West Point. <laughs> Steelman on the keeper. Pick up a four more. Kurt, do you think when it comes to just the players involved, forget about the alumni and the fans and the faculty and all that, when it comes to just the players involved, do you think there's a more intense rivalry in the country than Army-Navy? No, not at all. Not at all. And the uh, longevity of it is as well. Army has converted on six of ten third downs. They need to get one yard to convert this one. Steelman on the keeper, and he's got it. That was just great second effort on his part. He's done this a couple of times today where he fakes up inside with the fullback. He steps back and he just leaps forward. He knows what he's got to get and uh, he has uh, the uh, the ability and the instinct to get there. First and 10 Army 1330 remaining in the game. Army has enjoyed the tremendous advantage at first downs. Handoff Mealy. He was first hit by Duran Harmon. Pickup of about one on the play. Next up for Rutgers next week will be a date at Pitt. The rest of the Rutgers schedule, all Big East games. Scarlet Knights trying to go to a bowl game for the sixth straight year, which is amazing that when you consider before Greg Schiano arrived, Rutgers had been to a grand total of one bowl game in its history. And now they've gone five years in a row. Steelman changes directions, tries to run around Freeney. Oh, what a great job Freeney did. Freeney did a great job of holding contained. I mean, that's typically what the defensive end has to do. That's one of his responsibilities. And uh, he did not bite on that fake going down the uh, left side of the line. So as you can see, he's got contained. He stops. And uh, now it just becomes a foot race. Uh, Freeney is obviously he's got some pretty good speed for big guy. Army seven for 12 on third down, but they need to get 12 yards to keep this drive alive. Steelman being chased by Legrand and Lowry completes the Hassan first down. Oh my goodness, what poise <laughs> Steelman demonstrated there. He was running around back there forever. And uh, he goes to the left, and then he swings back to the right. He feels the pressure, gets out of the pressure, buys some time, and uh, finds an open guy, which would be Hassan on that particular play. Think of all the different things he demonstrated there. Poise, agility, touch and it results in a key first down ball at the Rutgers 48 Hassan for three Charlie Noonan made the stop let's watch his uh, his ability to scramble but also his touch on this particular play gets it right in the pocket Second down and seven, Steelman's numbers. We mentioned earlier that Steelman's dad played football at Appalachian State. Well, his mom has run in more than 50 marathons. Quick handoff. But Cobbs lost his footing and went down. He lost a yard or two. So it'll be another third and long this time. The Black Knights need eight. That last third down play was big for, uh, for Army. This is going to have the same type of magnitude. 
because you're only a seven point game regardless of how uh, statistically the game is lopsided with regards to uh, you know the numbers uh, Rutgers is still in the game and if they stop army here Rutgers down mm -hmm. seven will have the ball and they do stop it. Eric LeBrand. 6 200, 275 pound junior from Avenel, New Jersey. So Army will have to punt. Something the cadets have done only once all day. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Bulls will stand at his own 40. Back deep to return Mason Robinson at his own 10. Beautifully placed out of bounds at about the seven. So with everything that's gone wrong for Rutgers, they look up, they're down seven, and they have the ball. 918 left. Possession. Chase Dodd took them all the way for the touchdown. Can he do it again? He finally got the job done the last time Rutgers had the football. Dodd's 322 passing yards last week against UConn, the most by a Big East player this season, at least entering the weekend. Zach Kolaris topped that last night. But it was also the third most yards by a Rutgers freshman in school history. The second most yards by a Rutgers quarterback making his first career start. Can he do it again? Dodd looking deep up the near side for Sanu. Out of bounds. Good coverage by Donovan Travis and Antoine Aaron. Greg Schiano says that he thinks that Sanu will become a very good wide receiver in time. Mm -hmm. But one of the downsides of having someone as versatile Sanu is yeah. getting getting him enough reps practice time to do the various things that he does on a field running it wildcat returning kicks on the draw penalty marker. Martinet got the handoff. Could we see yet another false start on the Scarlet Knights? Already been whistled for eight penalties for 45 yards today. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men in the backfield. Half the distance to the goal. Replay. Second down. Well, that's a, a new one for the Scarlet Knights today. So they'll move the ball back just inside the four. There's Greg Schiano in his 10th year as coach. His team 
the fourth least penalized team in the Big East entering today, but the numbers today aren't going to help that any. Shiano, the Big East coach of the year in 2006, when Rutgers went 11 and 2, finished in a tie for second in the Big East, and beat Kansas State in the Texas Bowl. That was the year that Rutgers had that dramatic win on a Thursday night on ESPN over Louisville. The Statue of the uh, Statue of Liberty. The Empire State Building was all adorned in red lights for the occasion. And it really brought back that season, that game particularly, really brought back an excitement to the Rutgers campus and an excitement of the Rutgers football program, which had not existed for a long time before. And basically, I think that excitement has managed to sustain itself ever since. Well, Shiano has uh, come in and uh, taken a program, I think, that was uh, obviously uh, not uh, at its at its best and uh, brought a, uh, a different attitude, a different approach. And uh, I think you're, you're, you see that year in and year out as to what he's doing. Only Randy Etzel at UConn has been at his current job longer than Shiano has been at Rutgers among the Big East coaches. Before coming to Rutgers, spent two years as an assistant under Butch Davis at the University of Miami. Before that, three years as an assistant under Dave Wanstead with the Bears. And before that, Kurt, six years at your alma mater. To nine minutes, 25 seconds on the play clock. He spent six years at your alma mater as an assistant under the legendary Joe Paterno. So he has quite an extensive coaching pedigree. He's in his 10th year as a head coach and he's only 44 years old. Mm -hmm. Jersey guy out of Wyckoff, New Jersey, played at Bucknell. Dodd being pressured in the end zone. Throws deep. Caught by Jefferson. What a play by Dodd. <laughs> The escapability, and he turns it into about a. That's what you like about this guy. When you you think uh, that uh, he is uh, he's going down. I'm thinking we have a safety here. And uh, what I like about this play is that he slides to the to the left in the pocket, and he feels just enough. Uh, he has just enough time to get the ball down the field. 53-yard pickup. Martinet. Pick up of three. Again, last week in his first career start against UConn, Dodd started slowly, but late in the game, threw a touchdown pass to Mark Harrison. Let's look at this at a different angle. He slides out of the pocket, finds enough time, just buys enough time, and he has a big arm to get the ball down the field because he didn't really have his feet set when he threw that particular pass. But against UConn, he hit Harrison with a 52 yard pass to tie the game. And then when Rutgers got the ball back, immediately hit Deering with a 45-yard completion to set up the game-winning field goal. But that was a huge mistake. He's picked off. Donovan Travis. There's a penalty marker in the Rutgers backfield. Helmet have a contact on the defense. Oh. Number nine. The penalty. One that way. Steve Erzinger called for the late hit on Dodd. Nullify that interception. Well, you can see it right here. He takes one additional step and hits him right in the face. So that's the fourth time this half that an Army penalty has given Rutgers a first down. <laughs> Uncharacteristic of Army. And not just the fourth time, yeah. but the first time came on a third down. Rutgers would have had to punt, they didn't exactly. have to. The next one came on a fourth down. Rutgers mm -hmm. would have lost the ball on downs. They didn't. This one nullifies a turnover. Handoff Thomas. Nothing there. Erzinger made the stop that time, but Erzinger whistled for the penalty in the previous play. Let's look at the shot to the head. He throws the ball. You've got one step. Oh, well, oh yeah. That's can't argue uh, with that. Yeah, you helmet can't argue helmet. with that one. No, not at all. Clock continuing to run. It's been a rapidly moving second half. We're already midway through the fourth. Army has not scored this half. They kicked a field goal in the final play of the first half to go up 14. Dodd steps up in the pocket, throws over through his receiver Jefferson. 
Jefferson is 6'6". He needed to be about 6'10 yep. on that play. He had him open briefly for a second on that particular play and just uh, ball I think got out of his hands just a little bit too much. And an Army player injured on the play is Antoine Aaron. Junior from Dallas missed the Eastern Michigan game on opening day because of a leg injury. So we'll step aside with 657 to go in what has turned out to be a very compelling finish. Can Army hang on? Today's game on ESPN3.com is presented by Sprint, the Now Network. 6.57 remaining, fourth quarter, Army 17, Rutgers 10. Third and 13 for the Scarlet Knights at the Army 29. Four down territory? I think so, without a doubt. Rutgers 2 of 11 on third down, much better on fourth down. Six man rush. Quick toss to Sanu. Gets a great block. I'll tell you what, it's been a long day for Devin Watkins, who's been whistled for four false starts, but he just threw a downfield block that resulted in his team getting a huge first down. Let's, let's look at this play. What I like about this particular play is that Dodd gets rid of the ball fairly quickly. It's a three and out. You've got a big block downfield, and Sanu, uh, you know, breaks a tackle and picks up the uh, the first down. Sanu is sixth in the Big East in receptions, tenth in receiving yards, tenth in all-purpose yards. And there's and Rutgers follows that up with a false start long before Dodd. I don't even think Dodd started calling snap. signals. False start. Offense, number 10, five-yard penalty, replay, first down. Second time Jefferson's been whistled for a false start. He had the huge 53-yard reception to keep this drive alive. How many first and 15s have we seen from Rutgers from an illegal procedure? Quite a few. Well, if this, if you got extra points for a degree of difficulty, the Scarlet Knights would score very high today, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Martinek to the 15. Marcus Hilton with the stop, five yard game. Martinek had a prolific career in high school. He's from Hapatcon, New Jersey, not far from the Rutgers campus. He rushed for 7,859 yards and 80 touchdowns in his high school career. Had 109 yards rushing on opening day against Norfolk State. Hurt his ankle the next week in a win over Florida International. We're approaching the five minute mark. Dodd to throw. Looking for Harrison. Touchdown!
This game is starting to amazingly resemble last week's game against Connecticut. Rutgers, should they convert the extra point, will have come all the way back from 14 down. San Santee for the tie. A Rutgers team who at one point in this game was being outgained on the ground by 250 yards is now tied. the thrower and the throwee Dodd and Harrison for the second week in a row they have connected on a game tying touchdown there is how Rutgers has done it quarter by quarter this season and I guess if you're you want to shine the fourth quarter is not a bad time to do it Kurt you're exactly right if you're going to step up and play now it's the time to step up and play and it looks as though this thing is holding true because uh, they put the last 14 points on the board. And remember Rutgers started that drive inside their own 10. Dodd nearly was sacked in his own end zone and completed a 53 yard pass to Jefferson. They had to convert a big play on third down. And then the touchdown pass to Harrison second touchdown pass of the day for Dodd right. fifth of his career second touchdown catch of the season for Harrison the sophomore from Stratford Connecticut and both of those touchdown catches have come late in the fourth quarter to tie games. So we have a new football game with 516 left San Santee to kick off and this is a good one inside the five. It's Malcolm Brown. Oh, what a great open field hit by Eric LeGrand, who is shaken up on the play. Play on those kickoff teams, Kurt. You have sometimes you're you got 40, 50 yards of momentum running at full speed, and then you initiate the contact by just throwing your body in midair. And sometimes the end result is unfortunate. I see it. That was a violent collision. Eric LeGrand, 
six two two hundred seventy five pound junior from Avenel New Jersey. They have a stretcher out there they have a cart out there Greg Shiano is out there. And players on both teams have taken a knee. On each sideline. And their thoughts are with Legrand. Kurt, how many years you play football? Counting your high school years? Oh, uh, say 15 or so, 16. It was all said and done. Can you describe what it's like when something like this happens to one of your teammates? Well, uh, it brings back the reality of the game itself and that it is a collision sport and a violent sport. And, you know, this is a, a tough situation for not only the opposing team, but the home team. And especially when you see a, a guy that you have uh, played with uh, in this particular situation and you're friends with him and you see him in this this type of situation. It is a it's a sick feeling uh, in your stomach. We're going to step aside with five minutes and ten seconds left. Army 17, Rutgers yeah, yeah. 17. Time out. We're back at the Meadowlands Stadium where play has come to an abrupt halt because of an injury suffered by Eric Legrand on the Rutgers kickoff. Legrand came flying down the field, made the tackle, and went down suddenly. And the the one thing that is comforting to know is that he has already received and will continue to receive the best and quickest medical attention. So our thoughts and prayers needless to say are with Eric and his family. It's always disconcerting Kurt when yeah. you, when you see something like that happen when you judge what the immediate observations are from the others around him and you saw Greg Shiano come flying across the field in fact Greg is on the far sideline and and I'm wondering whether that's he's talking to a family member yep. yeah it does look like he's talking to a family family members of him. perhaps Eric's mom yeah. is wearing number 52 yeah. so we wish him the best Watching a football, you see a lot of these sort of situations. They almost always turn out okay. And that's what we're hoping for that this turns out okay. It's a precautionary type thing, and uh, hopefully, we can get an update here uh, sometime later. You know, one thing mm -hmm. that there has never been a time where there is better medical care available 
at a football game than there is right now. So back to reality, and Hassam on first down picks up about 11. Tackle made by Brandon Bing. That particular play has been very successful for Army today. It's been a huge day for Hassan. His second 100 yard rushing effort of the season. And as well as Army runs the ball, that's only Army's second individual 100 yard rushing performance of the year. Quick catch, first one of the day by Austin Barr, junior from Lake Oswego, Oregon. Brandon Bing made the stop. Barr's grandfather, his father, and four brothers all played college football, all at Purdue. <laughs> and Austin is at the United States Military Academy, receiving about as good an education as you can get anywhere. Steelman, another first down at midfield, clock running. Clock is stopped to advance the change yep. with 4.13 to go. We've seen this play time and time again. Fullback uh, first option, quarterback second option, inside uh, inside zone run. First late in the game when it's tied, you love to be able to move the ball on the ground, and no one does it better than the Black Knights. Incomplete intended for Brooks. Brandon Bing with the coverage. 347 remaining. The four wins that Army has this year, only one less than they had last year. And the five wins they had last year under Rich Ellerson in his first year were the most since the cadets won 10 games in 1996, the last time they went to a bowl game. So it all it has a chance to become a very, very special season at West Point. Steelman dropped the ball, and Rutgers has it. <laughs> Rutgers ball at the 45-yard line of Army. Steelman inexplicably just dropped the football. It wasn't forced. It was recovered by Jonathan Freeney. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Looks like he hits uh, Hassan on that one uh, as he pulls the ball back inside. It, it looks like it was a bootleg play going to the outside. And uh, he, uh, he jars it and he just can't can't get back to it. Good. Freedy was awfully quick to jump on that, wasn't he? Sure That's was. only the second turnover of the day. Both of them have been Army turnovers. So now can Rutgers take advantage? 342 remaining. Big play as Martinick is stopped for a three yard loss by Steve Erzinger. A week ago, Rutgers came from yep. seven down in the fourth quarter to beat UConn by scoring 10 points in the last 353. Rutgers trailed by 14 points to begin the fourth quarter. They did score on the first play of this quarter, and they tied the game with 516 left. Following a second Army turnover, they have a chance to go ahead for the first time. Cordell Young in the backfield. Remember, he's the pass receiving specialist out of the backfield. Boy, that was dangerous. I, I think it's obvious that play was intended yep. for Young, but he just couldn't get free. He got caught up, and then Dodd was being pressured, and I think he just wanted to throw the ball away, but he nearly threw an interception. Well, it looks like uh, they were uh, trying to run a screen play, and Army just sniffed that out. And, Number uh, eight. That's who he wanted. Yeah, he was looking to throw a screen pass. And, uh, oh, that was dangerous. Very dangerous play. Pressure applied by Marcus Hilton and Donnie Dixon. So it's third and 13. Here comes Army. Rushing six, Dodd throws, caught by Sanu, but well short of the first down. Decision time. They need about five and a half yards. Looks like they're going to stay out there. Now, 
the downside is if you don't convert, you're giving Army the ball with very good field position. If you punted the ball, the worst that could happen, well, the worst that could happen is you could have a punt blocked in return yeah. for a touchdown, yep. I guess, but you probably won't give Army the ball any better than the 20. Rutgers is two for two on fourth downs, but they need five yards here. A long five as this, well. This is a heck of a gamble by Greg Shiano in a tie game. Maybe they won't snap. It. Play clock ran out. Now I think they'll take the five yards and punt. They're giving their punter five more yards to work with. My philosophy always is, Kurt, is why put the game on the line when you don't have to? Yeah, especially with the game being tied at 17-17, there's no reason for you right. to to go. It's not like you need five no. inches. You need five no, you yards. Need five yards. Of course, back in the day, before they had the overtime rule, that was a different story. Yeah. Let's see if Delegana can pin Army in. Fair catch called for at the eight yard line by Josh Jones. So Army now needs to go 91 yards. Of course, a field goal will win it. They, they really don't have a prolific kicking game. Yeah, but the question is, with two minutes left, can you run the ball up the field with two minutes? Two That's timeouts left. But two, well, two timeouts, you may have a shot at it, but if you're trying to run the football, you know, the clock is going to continue to run right. regardless. Well, depends how many first downs you get. Big plays as well, you're exactly right. The first downs would stop the chain, at least momentarily. The one thing you don't want to do is get turn the ball over, and they're going to start with a false start. Ball start. Offense. 67. 73. Half an instance of the goal. They play first down. Greg Schiano said about the triple option, none of our opponents comes even close to running this sort of offense. Army has added a lot of misdirection and motion to make it even more difficult to prepare for. It's all about eye discipline. Keep your eyes where they're supposed to be. Keep it simple. Steelman. Pick up of two. And now Rutgers will begin using its timeouts on defense. Now Shiano says I discipline that that's a lot easier said than done with regards to the way Army uh, runs the uh, triple option. This is Rutgers first time out of the second half. So they have two more. This is always a cat and mouse game. Normally, if you're behind, that's one thing. You want to stop the clock and get the ball back with as much time. But when it's tied, you stop the clock and you never know. You could be helping your opponent. If Army gets a first down, then all of a sudden everything changes. Your, your, well, let, let your short term goals can, yeah. can spin yeah. 180 degrees in a heartbeat. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, they're second and 11. Right. And Army uh, is uh, not good with third and long. Cops. Nothing there. Timeout Rutgers. Minute 53 to go. Rutgers can stop the clock one more time. So now if you're Army, you have a decision to make. Do you risk throwing the ball? Do you risk throwing the ball this deep in your own territory where an interception could will probably cost you the football game. But also if you throw it and it's incomplete it stops the clock and then Rutgers doesn't have to use the timeout. I don't think this offense is built for the two minute drive to be right. honest with you. They'll probably run it force Rutgers to use its last timeout. And if Army doesn't get the first down. Figure Rutgers will get the ball back with about a minute 35 left and no timeouts to go needing only a field goal to win and in San Santee 
they have a very good and a very clutch as he's demonstrated place kicker. Well, I tell you what I, I like uh, obviously Rutgers in this particular situation and the main reason why I like Rutgers is because they have a quarterback who can throw that ball down the field which gives you an opportunity to put yourself in field goal range. Third and nine. Steelman on the keeper. There's your timeout with a minute 50 to go. So Army goes three and out. The five yard penalty hurt even more. And Rutgers will get the ball back, barring some sort of penalty here on the punt. You figure they're going to get the ball back in Army territory. San Santee, as we look ahead, should it come down to that. His longest field goal of the year is a 43 yarder. Greg Ciano told me this week I would not be afraid to have him try a 50 yarder with the game on the line. There's always a wind issue in this stadium, and it is a windy day. So, you figure here. Rutgers is probably going to get the ball close to midfield and they have to move it maybe 20 yards yep, 20 at, yards at, at most to give San Santi a chance with a minute and 50 to go also Rutgers has two men back to return the punt. The punter is Bulls. Beautiful kick. Gorgeous kick. Lefedge back at his own 43. What a clutch kick by Bulls. It's been a tale of two halves for the Scarlet Knights. Well, as you can see, Dodd here uh, in the first half uh, is just getting a lot of pressure put on him up the middle, from the sides. Now in the second half, better blocking. He's getting rid of the football a little earlier with a three step drop. And he's making more decisive, uh, decisive decisions. There, as you can see, that last uh, touchdown to Harrison on that particular play. And it was an eight play, 93 yard drive that took 402. 46 yard punt for Bulls. And there are how your stats break down half by half. I'll tell you what, you can win a lot of games with your special teams, and Bulls just. Wow, that was a clutch punt. Dodds the throw. Sanu, great open field tackle. Is made by LB Brown. Rutgers does not have any timeouts left, but they still have plenty of time. Minute 30 to go. You figure they have to go about 25 more yards to give San Santi a chance, but that hurts. Oh, that's a killer. That is a clock killer with no timeouts. Hilton with the eighth Army sack today. An army. <laughs> now army uses a timeout in anticipation of getting the ball back. So what do you do now if you're Greg Shiano? You have a third and ten. You don't have any timeouts left. I, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get the ball to Harris. Uh, on a, uh, so you would, yeah. you, you would be the aggressor here, and you wouldn't concern yourself. Oh no. well, we don't want to no. stop the clock with an incompletion and give Army more time when they get the ball. No, back. because you know Army again, as I we had kind of talked about earlier, uh, is a uh, it's not built for the two minute drive. They're not going to throw it deep on you. So you can kick it down there, and time is probably going to run out. Because, or unless they, you know, they have a, uh, a big throw down the field, but uh, I, I think you try to find Harris on this play on a quick, uh, not even a quick hitch, but a, a, a long out route, and uh, get man coverage, and see if you can get it to him and uh, let him uh, make a play. And he also has his third down specialist back in that backfield with him, Cordell Young, mm -hmm. number eight. Keep your eye on him. He caught the touchdown pass on the first play of this fourth quarter. 
two wide receivers to each side. Army rushes seven. Dodd throws down the middle. First down to Deering. Clock will stop while they advance the chains. 1-10 left. Ball at the Army 35. Harrison or Deering. <laughs> <laughs> Dodd throws right complete this time it's young it's a new 27 clock running 54 53 you wonder how army feels about taking that time out on defense now huh Dodd just moves the ball to the middle of the field to set up a field goal yeah. by San Santee and that's what they're going to do they don't have any timeouts left they're going to let the play clock run down and they're going to try to win the game on a 47 yard field goal by San Santee. Why not? I think uh, we saw this last week didn't we. Now Army took a timeout here. Why would Army take a timeout. Ooh. I mean, there, there's no doubt yeah. that last play was designed for one thing put the ball between the hash marks. Again, San Santi last week beat Connecticut on a 34 yard field goal with 13 seconds left. And we're going to take a look mm -hmm. at it. It was set up on a 45 yard completion from Dodd to Deering. 34 yards for the win for San Santi. He's been around, he's a junior. He kicked one field goal earlier today. That was a chip shot, a 19 yarder. So he's made 40 field goals in his career. Third most in Rutgers history, 14th most among active players in the country. His longest so far this year is 43 yards. He is two for four when attempting a field goal from beyond 40 yards. The ball will be snapped by Robert Jones. And now they're sending the, the offense they're back. They're going to run another play. But whatever it is, they have to stop. Mass confusion. Oh. Offense. Oh. Number 19. Five yard penalty. Oh, well, that's a killer. That, Go down. that would make a field goal from this distance very challenging. So now, whatever you do here, you have to run up. You got to get out of bounds, right? You got to run a play. You got to get out of bounds. Is there enough time to complete a pass yeah. for a first down and it stop the clock to advance the chains? Wow, Rutgers. I'm not sure I understand that this uh, this particular. Uh, well, I, I can strategy. see why you wouldn't try this. This would be a 52 yard field goal. He's going to, and the clock is running down again. Dodd, the pass rush. Oh, that was. It, it, it would be tougher to conjure up a way to mismanage a possession than that. Rutgers just, on those two, just took themselves right out of field goal range. And now the best they could try is for a Hail Mary. No timeouts left. Dodd throwing deep. And it will be intercepted by Travis. That's like a punt. And the crowd doesn't like it at all. Now, who can blame them? I mean, I do I not understand why they did not uh, set up for a field goal. Well, what I don't understand is why would you run a play where you, you have your quarterback just take the snap, right. go to the middle of the field, fall down to set up. Exactly. And then not kick the field goal. And then not kick the field goal. So they run another play. Your inexperienced quarterback gets called for a delay of game. Here's the play we're talking about. Dodd yeah. takes the snap, moves left, falls down on his own to try to position the ball, presumably, for a field goal. Then Army calls timeout. Rutgers has a chance to think about it. Then a delay of game, a sack, an interception. Army takes a knee, and we're going in overtime. Reminds me of a golf swing when you have a whole lot of time to think about it. They call it paralysis for over analysis. Analysis That's by paralysis. Yeah, right. there you go, right there. 
course, one thing is inarguable. It's a lot easier to call the game from up here, isn't it? You're we'll, exactly right. We'll be back with overtime after this. We're going into extra innings here at the Meadowlands. Bob Picozzi along with Kurt Warner, Army 17, Rutgers 17. For those of you not familiar with the way overtime works in college football, there will be a toss of the coin. The team that wins will elect to go on defense first. Each team will get the ball at the 25 yard line, and all the rules apply. You get first down if you pick up 10 yards. And each team will get the ball at least once. Mm -hmm. And if it's still tied after one possession each, there'll be another coin toss and you keep going until someone wins. And the reason why you elect to go on defense is you want to see what the other team does so you know how many points you need to score. And uh, this crowd is just stunned. What, what was particularly confusing, I think, uh, Kurt, was the sequence of yeah. plays down the stretch. I think. It was a little surprising to see Dodd take the snap and just take it to the center of the field and fall down with so much time left still so far away. I mean there's nothing automatic about a 47 yard field goal. OK but when you go to the middle of the field then you have just told us that you're going to kick it. You right. told everyone else you're going to kick it because you want to get him in the right position to right. kick the ball and that's his favorite shot. So this is what happened down the stretch. Rutgers looked to be in pretty good shape after a couple of completions. They completed the pass for a first down to Deering and then a completion to Sanu short of the first down. So the clock was running. Rutgers has won the toss and elected to go on to defense. Army's ball first and ten. So Army will get the ball first. So Rutgers had the ball. Clock running. No timeouts left. So instead of trying to pick up more yardage, they make the decision, all right, let's move to the center of the field. We'll try to win the game with a field goal. But Army called timeout, and after the timeout, Rutgers sent its offense back out. There was a delay of game penalty, which definitely took it out yep. of field goal range. Exactly. Then the ball was snapped again. Then he was sacked, and man, he was really out of field goal range there. And then at that point, they had no choice but to just try to heave it down the field. You, know, you might get a pass interference call. Instead, it was intercepted, and Army took a knee. Well, here we go. Let's spin it forward. Now, is this an advantage for Army because they, their running style is pretty effective when they only need I to go 25 this fits, yards? This fits Army better than it fits Rutgers. First down, Steelman on the keeper, and he picks up about seven. Steve Boharness made the stop. And the reason why it fits Army well is because when you get inside the 20, the field shrinks. So, therefore, the running team, in my opinion, does have the advantage. And in terms of advantage today, Army has rushed for 272 yards, Rutgers minus 20. Remember, the sack yards all come out of the rushing total. Steelman, first down. 
So just like that, first and ten at the 13. Of course, the clock is not a factor at all. It doesn't even run in overtime in college football. By the way, you like the college overtime rule because certainly the college overtime rule has its critics. No special teams ever get into play, you know, punt or kick off. Seelman. I tell you what, I think Army probably likes it better than uh, than I would, uh, but uh, I, you know, it just depends on, on what your flavor is. I mean, obviously in the NFL, you go sudden death, uh, first team uh, scores wins it's here. Not, it's not like that rule is not without its critics. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I, I think any rule you have is going to be criticized, but you know, but at least here's my thinking. At least we're going to get a we're going to come to a conclusion here. Yes, exactly. Not like right. not like that Major League Baseball All Star game. <laughs> Oops, we ran out of pitchers. Hassan. Ball is now at the 11. So it will be third down and about three. Been spotted at the 12. He's going to be short. So they'll try to take the lead with a field goal. This will be about a 25 yard kick by Carlton. 0 for 1 today. Four for 11 for the year. And this one's good. So the 25 yard field goal by Carlton gives Rutgers the lead. Uh, excuse me, Army the lead. And now Rutgers gets the ball and can win it with a touchdown. With a touchdown, exactly. They can win it with a touchdown. Tie it with a field goal. So they do have an option, but you know, they still have to manage that clock, that 25 second clock. Uh, they've got to do a better job of uh, deciding what they're going to do and then do it. And then don't change your change your mind. This is the first game at the Meadowlands for Rutgers since playing Army the last time they met at this was not this facility, but Giant Stadium, which used to be located literally next door. In 1996. Sanu has the first down. And did he drop the ball at the end? Nope. So already with San with San Santee's range, Rutgers is already within range of tying the end of the field goal. Obviously, they're not looking for three here. Sanu makes the uh, basically the uh, option zone up up inside. He makes the fake and, and basically. Uh, He's running the ball. There's no question about it. If you're gonna, Ooh. if you're gonna get, uh, that's uh, a fumble. Oh, it? really? I didn't see that. Looked like a fumble. Sanu inside the ten. There's Sanu. Let's look at the last play here. Oh, that, that, that did look like a fumble, didn't it? Yeah. But I think he recovered it at the same time. Sanu recovered it. Dodd himself. It looked like a play out of the Army playbook. You're already in field goal range. You want to end the game here. Yeah. But to do it. You're going to need to convert on third and six, so they send out send Cordell Young back onto the field. It's very dangerous catching the ball out of the backfield. Still 15 left in the play clock. J. 
two wide receivers to the left and one to the right. Dodd looking, throwing, it's caught across the middle by Keith Stroud. Is it enough for a first down? It's very close. And it's a first down. First and goal for Rutgers. So despite all the issues they've had today, they've been sacked eight times. They clearly botched the last possession at the end of regulation. They've been outgained on the ground by about 250 <laughs> yards. They're three yards away from winning the football game. Dodd to Martinet. Still moving forward. Stop at the one. Second and goal. Great second ever for Martinez. Stop made by Mike Gann, whose dad, Mike Sr., is an All-American at Notre Dame and played for nine years with the Atlanta Falcons. Timeout Army. So we... Uh, and we shouldn't be surprised by this, I suppose, Kurt. It's only the second career start for Chase Dodd, but I guess we saw the best in Dodd and the worst in Dodd within one game. What are some of your observations if you saw him play for the first well, time today? I, I think in the first half, uh, you do what you typically do against a young quarterback. You bring pressure, you, uh, you change the coverages, you try to confuse him as much as you possibly can. The second half, I think they made adjustments. He made adjustments. Started getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker. Uh, Three-step drops, a little bit more out passes, uh, a little bit more flat routes, et cetera, et cetera, which probably gave him a little bit more comfort in what he was doing. So it's a growing process for him, especially when you're a freshman. And this has been a, uh, I think it's been a uh, real test for him uh, as to his ability to stay within the game. So Rutgers has three chances to end the football game here by getting into the end zone. Handoff, Martinek, touchdown. And Rutgers wins it. Looks like they're going to review the play. To see if he got in. Yeah. If that ruling, the touchdown, holds, Rutgers will have won the game despite being outgained on the ground, 289 yards to minus two. <laughs> that is it's unbelievable. You could not tell me that you would have that that difference of a margin and still win a football game. And the minus two is in large part because they were sacked eight times. The crowd has seen the replay on the board. The crowd's convinced that the ruling on the field, touchdown will stand, and here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. The game is over. Well, partner, we saw a little bit of everything today, didn't we? We sure have. Uh, I, I would have. I mean, Army has uh, statistically played a better football game but you know what what really matters is the end of the game and it's 23 to uh, 20 Rutgers so with the win Rutgers goes to four and two they'll visit Pitt next Saturday at noon Eastern time nothing but Big East opponents the rest of the way for the Scarlet Knights with the loss Army slips to four and three they have next week off in two weeks on October 30th they'll host VMI at noon at Mikey Stadium and with that win, Rutgers has now defeated Army for the seventh consecutive time. And for the eighth time in ten meetings at the Meadowlands Complex, although this was the first game played at this brand new stadium, the Meadowlands Stadium. And obviously, we uh, would like to once again reiterate that our thoughts and prayers are with Rutgers defensive tackle Eric Legrand, who was 
carried off the field on a stretcher. For Kurt Warner and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Bob Picozzi. So long from East Rutherford, New Jersey. For an archived copy of this entire game, as well as other games on our family of ESPN Networks, log on to ESPN3.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Rutgers beats Army 23-20 in overtime.